Welcome to the Planescape, where good and evil clash, where law and order maintain their delicate balance, the battleground for gods and monsters. Many heroes have written their legends in the stars of the Astral Sea, but these are not their stories. The Per Aspera and her crew, Kiana, Finbar, Virla, and Danny, may not be the stuff of legends yet, but they're definitely rolling with difficulty. Hello and welcome to our third episode of Rolling with Difficulty, the adventures of the crew of the Prospera. Crew of the Prospera, say hi. Hi. Hi, crew of the Prospera. (laughs) (laughs) That gimmick's already taken. We can't can't do that one. (laughs) If there's nothing else, I guess we'll just jump right into where we last left our heroes. Hey, some of us are heroes. Heroes in loose terms. (laughs) Protagonists? Mm, Definitely. At the end of our last adventure, the crew of the Prospera had successfully completed a job given to them by Uncle Otto, Danny's mentor, father figure, definitions loose. uh, It's Uncle Otto, you know, everybody loves Uncle Otto. (laughs) From the city brass in the elemental plane of fire, he charged you, along with his ship, uh, as he reminded you, to sort of smooth over a problem he had with a deal he'd made where he had acquired some specific piece of arcano tech from hell, from uh, Bator, the nine layers of hell. It's tasked you to go to the first layer, Avernus, to fetch fuel for the, what you found out to be the, the hell rides or the, uh, basically motorcycles. He tasked <laughs> you to go get some fuel for it, which you uh, discovered was easier said than done, but arriving in Avernus, you found the train that you needed to raid, concocted a plan, had a dope encounter where you separated the engine from the rest of the cars, leaving them behind, fought your way through the battalion of devils, bearded devils that were on their way, killed the Maragons, the guards that were guarding the many, many trophies in that room, rescued a surprise, stowaway is the wrong word, captive, surprise captive among the devils, gets Zerai by the name of Enoch, retrieved the soul coins, which are the fuel for these devil's rides, and plane shifted your way out of literal hell and back to the comfort of the astral sea. It is here a short time later that we pick up our story. Enoch is, he's already pale yellowy green, but is pretty famished, expresses that he hasn't eaten or really like slept in days. He's had sleep, but not satisfying because he's been chained up. Finbar, I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. I I don't want to, I never want to assume a character's actions, but I feel like I can assume a character's actions. Uh, Luckily, um, uh, Enoch, that's that's the name, yeah? Uh, Well, yes. I have had this killer brisket growing in the kitchen (laughs) for the past two weeks that you're going to love. All right, you sit tight. Don't worry about your entire little body. I'm gonna go get some of that out for you. Alright? Your hospitality is most gracious. Thank you. You go ahead, get that ready. If you guys want to check over on roll 20, uh, ooh, you'll see that ooh, I yes. have a, the map up. There's no combat or anything. I just thought it would be fun for you guys to be able to check out the second deck. And I've gone ahead and placed all of you guys in the mess hall, the dining area. Along with along with Enoch there. So this is a perfect opportunity if there's uh, any interactions you want to have with each other or with him. There's like, you know, little blankets and napkins and odds and ends all over. He uh, sort of drapes one over his shoulders. He's been through it recently. Finn, you come in with the food. He nods, uh, thank you. Uh, and as you go to set, is it like, uh, describe what, what I'm seeing. Like, is it on like a plate and a bowl? What are we seeing here? It's on this massive slab of wood. Ooh. It is dripping uh, with a strange sauce. Uh, Finbar walks in and he says... Do you know what a, 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 how do you pronounce this, a Kruthric is? Well. Uh, unfamiliar. It's a strange little monster crawling around all over the place, and the last thing you want to do is eat that thing. But luckily for you, I have this crazy recipe that I picked up, and I had, hadn't had a chance to try it out. And luckily, everybody here has had my, my food, so they know a little bit of what I do, but I need a, I need a fresh palate. Uh, so if you will, he sets it down, uh, steak knife, uh, spices, 
Um, and he uh, sits across from him and uh, waits for him to take a bite. Uh, he gives a nod, a piece of the meat without him reaching over, a piece uh, lifts up off of the slab and comes over to the plate in front of him and sets down. Mm-hmm. Hygienic. Uh, the fork and knife position themselves uh, and he takes the, like they lift up to him and he takes them out of the air, cuts a piece, eats it, closes his eyes, chews very slowly. <sighs> that is delicious. I don't remember the last time I indulged in something so... Decadent? An appropriate word, I think. Huh. You are nice. truly a fine artist. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and he yells, uh, all right, guys, bring the rest in. And um, <laughs> <laughs> a flurry of pixies come in with um, some light salads, um, what look like to be like uh, chips of some sort, and um, some wine, water. Uh, he says, very rarely do I get to put on a feast. Uh, so, excuse the uh, extravagancies, if you will. Very rarely I'm offered a feast, so thank you, my good sir. I feel the need to thank you all again for rescuing me from what would have been certain death at the best, I'm sure. If there's anything I might do for you that is within my power, within my reason, then simply let me know. So, uh, how'd you end up in hell? Um, <laughs> if it's not too not, inappropriate. Uh, certainly not. If, if you're unfamiliar, I'm Githzerai. Me and my people hail from the world of Limbo. But we have many duties that we see to uh, across the many planes. I traveled to Betor with my Rachma, which is my party. We were there to specifically, strictly observe... Githyanki training grounds. If you're unfamiliar, the Githyanki are a powerful military force. Because of the quirks of the Astral Sea, their children must be born and raised on worlds where time passes. The harsher the world, the fewer survive, and the more cutthroat that they are in the end. So there is quite a strong presence in hell for those reasons. We make it our point to keep an eye on them and their goings on. We observed, but it seems that our knowledge of the devils and their patterns has shifted for whatever reason. My Rachma was ambushed, most killed. I know some fled, but I was taken captive, I assume because devils, the cowardly lot they are, fear the retribution of their masters, probably sought reward for my capture at the very least, to not be killed for not attempting to get information from me. Mm. That is where you found me. I was being taken, I know not where, I saw it was most likely the front lines of the Great Blood War. So, again, thank you for saving me from that wretched place. If it's not inappropriate for me to ask, and a glass floats over to his hand, uh, and he sips for a moment, (laughs) what was a, were a band like you with such a vessel doing in Avernus yourselves? Yeah, we had a job, you know, pick up a contract, go get some, what was it, what, is, what did you call it the other day? It was fuel for the bikes. Coins, uh, it was coins. Coins, yeah. Soul coins. Soul coins. Yeah, now we're gonna, I suppose we're heading back to the plane of fire. I'm gonna go drop these back off to Otto. Not all of them, hopefully. Just the ones that he needs. Yeah, yes. maybe we can figure out a way to help the fact that there are apparently tormented souls stuck in the rest of them. Like, that doesn't feel great eh. for me. Enoch uh, looks at you and says, Yes, you're correct. They are filled with souls. It is possible to break such an enchantment. I know not the specifics, but not powerful, but middling magics of the divine nature should be able to free the souls from their torment. Cool. It's not divine magic. It's not something I'm intimately familiar with, but I'm also able to uh, use my past knowledge of hell to reason. Well, as long well, as good. we still get paid for the job and Otto doesn't try to take the ship away from us because we're not working for him anymore, I don't really care what we do with the extra. You said uh, to the Plane of Fire is your destination? Yeah, City of Brass. And where to after that? Good question. We sort of go wherever the job takes us, as it were. 
Would you like to be dropped off someplace? Yes, if it would not be trouble. Limbo is my home world, but our citadels there are carefully guarded secret. If you were able to drop me off in the city of Sigil, I have means of returning home from there. Is, is Sigil... We've been to Sigil before. Been to Sigil. Can't be yeah. hard. <laughs> Yeah. I, don't, I don't know how space works in the astral sea. I was going to ask if Sigil is on the way to the city of Rest, but I don't even know if, that, if, if such a question makes sense. Uh, yeah, Sigil it's on kind the way of... to everything. On the way to everything. Yeah. 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 It's like the hub world, right? Yeah, it is the hub world. But so the the cosmology is a great ring, but traveling the astral sea isn't just sailing from the middle to like outer place. There's just random portals everywhere. It's kind of it's more like Star Wars mm. going ah. to different planets where. Some places might be closer than others, but there's nothing really on the way. In Star Wars, you have like the you know hyper roots or whatever. Um, someone's yelling at the podcast right now. <laughs> you have the the, 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 the highways, the hyperspace yeah. highways yeah, or whatever like um, that get you around. Mm-hmm. There are exactly there are ways of getting. Uh, there's routes as well, following the stars that get you to different places. And it's not that anything's necessarily like on the way to anything else. Some things are sometimes closer, but the way the portals are, they're random and. Knowledge of portals is also finicky because some open and close. You guys have knowledge of where certain ones are that are always there that are useful to you. So you have traveled enough, you know where the Sigil one is. You know where the Plane of Fire one is. But for example, you wouldn't have known where one to hell was mm-hmm. until Otto, Otto expressed that he made a deal with someone to get that lo- that information. But now you guys do know how to get back to hell if you ever want to. <laughs> oh, great. Nice. Uh, so. Yeah, most likely not. <laughs> I don't know. They had some cool stuff. Yes, you guys do have items that I think you need to identify. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Does anyone else have any other questions for Enoch? Uh, I'm going to wait until the conversation dies down and see if I can have a private conversation with Enoch. Um, Certainly. There will be a moment for that. Otherwise, he just politely asks your names, finishes his meal. He's very uh, deliberate in his mannerisms. He takes a hearty portion, but is not, even though he's probably ravenous, doesn't pork it down or anything. He's very, very civilized about it. Very disciplined mm. about it. He clearly clearly has some some willpower, so to speak. <laughs> Polite conversation is made, but after the meal, will excuse himself to go get some air on the top deck. Yeah. Does this count as a short rest? Yes, this does. So go ahead. Everyone can uh, roll their hit dice. Yes, good. At the end of the meal, he excuses himself. It says, uh, your hospitality is gracious, but I feel somewhat claustrophobic after the ordeal of the past days. I'll take some time on the deck if that's fine yep uh that's great <laughs> yeah do do people get a, a bonus yeah. from the you, chef you get a you get a free d8 Ooh. Oh, oh perfect awesome. in that case i will smoke. spicy um as soon as it looks like everyone's starting to disperse uh danny is very rudely standing up from the table and like trudging on <laughs> down to wherever it is that we're storing all of our loot because i'm gonna start tearing into these into this mechanical nonsense there's a, <laughs> there's a third level of the deck where you put it, <laughs> unless you want to leave it, I, I would say, unless you want to leave it all on the deck. Those are basically your two options. Is There's no space in the middle, so it's either upper deck or lower deck. I assume we would have put it into storage in the lower deck uh, for now, and then move whatever we need. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, the the flamethrower is too big to take down. Yeah. Uh, so that is, that's oh, still yeah. on the deck. Um, well, we, we <laughs> need to so install it on the top. Yeah, we will need so. to install you do, it on the Yeah, shaft. you're going to need to install it. Dear listening audience, I have a massive topic. list of improvements that I would like to make to this <laughs> She ship. sent me so many <laughs> She's not kidding. She read it after last pod recording. <laughs> <laughs> I so asked. Bad. I asked. I said, uh, you're an artificer. Is there anything just so I can, you know, like I won't be yeah, blindsided. Yeah. Is there anything you're thinking to do with the ship? And she was like, hold on, give me three hours. Uh, <laughs> I love, sent me I just love so how buried the requests were as well from mm-hmm. just like mm-hmm. a brig <laughs> to like a swiveling fu- feature on the on the Wait, we should chair. post we should post that. Yeah. Oh, that some that of those weren't requests. I didn't request the robot to walk around and sneak attack me. <laughs> <laughs> that one's just a surprise tool that'll help me later. Exactly. You gotta train those reflexes. Being a monk is hard work. Uh, I didn't request a flamethrower nice. either, but now that definitely just rocketed to the top of the list in terms of what's getting installed. But uh Danny will go as That was just yeah. I was like <laughs> There's gonna be a weapon on this for the, the demon grinder or whatever it was, and I was like, "What it will be? Roll." Oh, okay, it's a flamethrower. Oh no! <laughs> Beats the sticks cannon. Mm. Well, he oh, does. Big. Yeah, <laughs> oh. Wally knows what's up with that. Oh my god! Yes. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So you go and immediately start uh, tinkering, tinkering, um, tearing into it. I assume plugs like plodding around. I'll have him try and move stuff yes. in the background, but it's so you see this like tiny little mechanical cat trying to butt its head against the bike to get it to roll out of the way and. 
just sort of tinkering down there during our downtime while everyone else is mulling about the ship. Yeah, Plug took a nap while you guys ate, and just like accordion hisses in and out while he sleeps. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, once you guys once you guys got moving again, he was like, "What's going on?" and followed you down. Aww. Virla. Uh, yeah, Virla will go back to the the helm of the ship and and readjust the coordinates to head towards Sigil. So are we going okay. to Sigil first or plane of fire first? I, I I it feels rude to request Enoch to accompany us on for the duration of our mission. That's fair. Do you say that when he's still there or after he excuses himself? Oh, I, I just I just go, I, I suppose it would be after the fact. Uh, Finn, I assume you're just going to be cleaning up? Yeah, there's, uh, I brought a lot to the table at the time. Like, yeah. All the pixies are. Uh, uh, you're fair, yeah, your, your pixies are, are going, yeah, they're, they're like eating like little bits off the table too. Uh, as they go. They, like, they one, know, one of them's damn. like, you like putting it in their mouth and another comes and like slaps their hand. They know uh, damn well they're not allowed to eat the scraps. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're supposed to taste it before it goes out to make sure it's good. <laughs> I've been watching so much Kitchen Nightmares, hey, it's, it's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than when you guys have wine and one of them has just just takes a little dewdrop and then just... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally plastered. Aww. Aww, no uh, and yeah, Kiana, you want to go see Enoch on the top deck? Yeah, uh, I'm going to uh, see if I can kind of talk to him a little bit. Um, not like fully out of your... I, I'm not like... I'm not being super cagey about this. I just don't feel like 100% comfortable, so I'm going to want to be... A little more private, I guess, uh, and I'm just gonna kind of be like, so, um, you, uh, you, you know a lot about different things on different planes, it sounds like. He sees you approach. He has a pretty good insight, so he can tell you're, like, a little uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, um, I figured. He beckons for you to come stand next to him and gives a, gives a nod. There are things that the Githzerai have a, as a rule, keep, keep an eye on. There are, yes, I, I right. would not consider myself a scholar of the planes, but. Okay. Um, you have a question, please. Well, I'm a little bit new at all this. I uh, apparently I come from the prime material plane, uh, and ah. I wanted to know if you knew anything about a monastery that would be right on the edge of the Underdark. I think. He yeah, he gives a nod. I'm familiar with the prime only through. Word of mouth. I've never visited myself. Okay. The same applies for the Underdark as well. I do not know any specific monasteries there, but it is interesting. You are also one of a monastic tradition. Yeah, well, yeah. Um. The Gezeri culture is entirely based on this way of life, is why I inquire. Oh, yeah. Um, it seems like your monastic tradition allows for you to do things like go outside and... Uh, have adventures and talk to people, right? It's kind of the impression I'm getting. Yes. A principal belief among Gitzerai is adherence to a balance in the universe, but to follow principles without exploration, without insight. Self-reflection into those beliefs is, in no s small words, a form of madness. In my opinion, yes, it, it is customary for us to make many pilgrimages out into the world. Wow. Um, that sounds uh, very cozy. I would say we spend most of our time within our citadels. In that still sounds very cozy, honestly. Uh, limbo is not a <laughs> limbo is a is the uh, the world of uttermost chaos. But we find comfort there. We are able to use our psionic abilities to bend that reality to our will and make huh. from the chaos order. How does that work? <sighs> it's complicated. Our abilities are innate and have painful origins, but okay. essentially the physical world and the psychic world, and he kind of gestures to the astral sea at this point, are two sides of a single coin able to affect each other. This manifests even more so than the arcane and divine magics in many different ways, but for us it allows uh, the manipulation of reality through our imposed strength of will okay. uh, he waves a hand and the like some ropes kind of raise it he does that same like te right. light telekinesis thing where some ropes move this varies depending on where we are again in uh, limbo we're able to create monasteries of adamantine but anywhere wow. yes uh i'm able to mimic these effects 
Well, that's really interesting because all I know how to do is this, and I'll do the astral arms. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. The astral arms come up. He takes a, immediately two things you notice with your good insight is yeah. remarkable reflexes because immediately he starts to go into a defensive, but also remarkable insight and realizes, of course, that there's no real threat here and relaxes. So before he even fully gets into the I'm prepared to defend myself, he's good. at the I don't need to defend myself state. <laughs> Whew. Didn't want to. Uh. He observes, goes, fascinating. Uh, truly fascinating. You said, uh, as I as I said, psionics manifest in many different ways. May I? And he goes oh, yeah, to, yeah. he raises a hand as if to place it on your forehead. Uh, yeah? He moves his hand closer and stops just before he makes contact. So close you can almost feel the finger, but never actually touch it. Right. Slowly kind of moves it across to your temple. Closes his eyes. Fascinating. You're familiar, if you're of the monastic traditions, you're familiar with the concept of ki, that which is not supernatural, but yeah, uh, extra natural, the, the life force within a within a person. Right. Yeah. It's all about controlling that and manifesting it physically into these things. Yes. It seems that your ki, the meeting of the mind and the body for you, is manifested through a powerful well of psionic energy you have within yourself. Huh. It's almost, he moves to the temple and pauses. How much do you know of the nature of the psionic ability you possess? Its uh, origins? Uh, it's, uh, not, nothing. I, everyone at my monastery could do the arms. They, they didn't look like this, but I just learned how to do it. So. He says, uh, please, um, uh, just motions to the, the hard wooden deck and says, sit with okay. me for a moment. Oh, okay. He has no sort of minor illusions or anything, but sort of enters a meditation state and gestures for you to do the same. Okay. I sense within you a deep well of psionic power. And I was, for the first moment, impressed, but also taken aback. One of your clear skill, though still with much room to learn, would have mm. such a powerful well. But if I may say so without overstepping, mm -hmm. I believe you are, in fact, a we. Hmm? Uh, a, wait, like a plural? He has his eyes closed, so uh, I don't know if you move or anything, but he waits for you to finish asking and says, look within yourself. Okay, all right. I'm going to close my eyes and look within myself. You close your eyes. <laughs> there are beings, pure psionic energy, rare, oft unheard of, but very real nonetheless. If I am correct, I believe one of these to be deeply entwined within you. Oh. Separate, but the same. Go ahead and make me a wisdom check. He rolled really high in his wisdom oh, check, by the way. Good job, Enoch. Whoa. All right, wisdom <laughs> check. What is this? Okay. Oh, okay. Well, I rolled a 12, so that's a 16. <laughs> 16, pretty good. You retreat, close your eyes, and retreat into a meditative state. Enoch goes on and he says, he says some things that you're definitely like, you've never, maybe never heard them in this order, but definitely some things that you've come to understand. True reality, the physical world, and the true self are, as he already said, two sides right. of the same truth, the, the same thing that is that is real. Uh, and where they meet, that is the power of Kia, that's the power of life. It says, the gifts strengthen this life with their psionics, uh, as do you. It seems that your strength comes from, though, the true reality and the true self meeting form their own strength. Your person and the sentient life within you, two sides that also form a new strength. Huh. And you sense for a moment, you think back with that, with that was with a 16. Uh, I think you think back to arriving in the astral sea and it feeling right. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You finally feeling like there was this other, and maybe it didn't click at the time, but it was definitely. The same way, uh, like a dream that you might hear someone speaking out loud and you you dream it as well. It might have mm -hmm. seemed like your your own feelings, but more it was almost like someone else's feelings influencing yours. The same way words spoken aloud might influence a dream. Right. You feel elation. Huh. Recognition. Just an alien feeling that is nonetheless your own boil within you. It only happens for a moment... But as you open your eyes, there is uh, the same gold astral projection that forms your arms. You mm -hmm. realize there's something over your face. 
Oh. Uh, and this is uh, narratively how you unlock your sixth level uh, ability. Hey! Um, <laughs> awesome. Uh, to conjure your astral face. Ooh. Perfect. Okay. All right. That was educational. <laughs> um, cool. Uh, well, thanks. Uh, he, he opens much. his eyes, sees you. He's bathed in a little bit of the golden light uh, and smiles. It appears I am perhaps uh, m- more knowledgeable than I gave myself credit. I'd say so. Uh, he, I'd say he, that stands, he stands, he says, um, I'm sorry if your training until now has been less than desirable. I hope that this was educational, but also personal. And yeah. that so you find this suitable um, repayment <laughs> for the great deed you have already done me this day. Oh, I mean, yeah, no, thanks so much. This is... um. Honestly, it was already great just to know that being a monk did not have to be <laughs> what I thought it was. No, there are many similarities between those of the monastic traditions across all the planes, but even more numerous are the differences. Perfect. All right. I invite you to consider what you have been taught, and the best wisdom I can bestow is to find what is true through experience. Learn of the world as it exists, and protect it in its most natural and right state. Wow. Awesome. <laughs> I think I'm going to go stare at the, sp- at the the sky for a while <laughs> until we arrive wherever we're going. You hear like a dun 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 dun, dun get louder, trap door flies open, whoop! Yo, Kiana, I need you to use your big magic arms to move some heavy shit downstairs. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll stare at the sky later then. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Meditation uh, through work. <laughs> As you you come up and throw the hatch open, Kiana, go ahead and make a perception check for me as Perception. you just kind of stare off into the... You, for a moment as you uh, Luke Skywalker off into the binary <laughs> sunset. All right, let me... Where the heck is my perception? That's two Star Wars references. I was going to say, how many Star track. Wars references will we make this episode? Play along at home. Uh, well, uh, this time I rolled an eight, so I got a 12. 12? Dexterity of a ship? Yeah, not that great. Oh, no. Um, oh, no. Oh, no. You see, just as Danny says that, and you're like, oh, yeah, sure, I'll be right there. Um, you catch just out of the corner of your eye something off in the distance kind of rapidly approaching. With a 12, what? you can't really uh, make out what it is, but it's definitely, it's very easy to see stuff out here because it's just a big expanse what? Yeah. Um, <laughs> of nothing. <laughs> so a, a 12 is enough to, to grok that there's something going on. Huh. Okay. In that case, hold that thought. Uh, let's see if we can what? figure out what that is. <laughs> If she's pointing off in the distance, I'll squint at it and see if I can make out what she's pointing at. Yeah, go ahead and make a perception check. Alrighty, let's see what, what let's see what we got here. Ooh, but not bad. Well, with a minus one, that's a seventeen total. <laughs> Whoa. Seventeen is really good though. Oh yeah. You come up to the mast and squint, and you've seen these more, mm. so that's why you're able to clock a little bit, even though Kiana's got sharper eyes and was able to spot it once it's pointed out to you. You recognize what's approaching as another spell jammer. It's one of the dragonfly ships. Ooh. So it's sort of sleek and it has uh, wings. It's really fast. It's much faster than your guys' ship. They're smaller, but they're light and maneuverable and fast. Coming in, it hovers just over the top of the water and there's kind of like a wake being left just from the speed. You also spot there's something next to it that's kind of flying. With your 17, you clock, because you were the one who helped Enoch out and like open the chest for him. You clock the same kind of like shimmering, like, like exact red color of the belt that you saw him put on before. So maybe it is friendly. Oh man, those ships are so cool. Look, look at how fast they move. It's like they barely make any ripples, even though they're flying at a speed shiny. that we could never even hope to accomplish uh, in a vessel this large. I mean, uh-oh, the uh-oh, aerodynamic uh-oh. As design- you say that, you start to hear wings <laughs> <laughs> along with the like buzz of the dragonfly wings and you see the the red shape two like bat like wings and an elongated head flying alongside the ship from either side of the head of this dragonfly two figures pale yellow and green skin dressed in silvered armor with swords lean Uh-oh. out uh and raise swords the yankee uh... war party bears down on the paraspora Guys, I think they might not be friendly. Ah, uh, Enoch, what's a curse word in Gith? <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> I speak that language, but they know. kind of skip that Gith section in the Gith for Dummies book. <laughs> you say that, um, and he turns and looks, and then looks back at you, and then up at where the helm is, where Virla's sitting. Where are we? Where, where are we? How uh, did you learn of the, the portal to Avernus that you 
came through. Uh, right. Didn't Uncle Otto get yeah, told I don't it know. by the Otto got yeah. it. A client at gave it to him or some? Yeah, and this is a person you trust? Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> I do. Oh, I trust it Danny, so. <laughs> we are contractually <laughs> obligated to him. Does that count? Yeah, he's a good dude. I think that your contract led you right into gift space. Uh oh. Oh well, eh, that's a that's a risk of uh. Danny, quick travel. question: yeah. Do you do you do you want this dragonfly ship? Because I feel like the odds are good we might be able to get this dragonfly <laughs> ship. <laughs> well, let me put it to you this way. The per aspera uh-huh. is sort of like my life's work. So okay. would I love the opportunity to dismantle one of those dragonfly ships and understand the basic mechanics behind the, how they work and possibly integrate some of their technology into the per aspera? Absolutely, yes. But, <laughs> then there's a big but, I don't think realistically that we can just, uh, we can't really tow one the same way that we got those bikes on board. So I think this is going to be more of a smash mm-hmm. than a grab situation, you know? Okay. <laughs> Enoch looks to the few of you. Are you not experienced with Githyanki in any way? I don't think that they'll allow for much time to tow their ship after they've severed your limbs from your body. Oh, that's pleasant. <laughs> Take the opportunity to spend a spell slot to summon my cannon and just go like, they can fucking I'm still, try. <laughs> I'm still washing dishes in the kitchen. Oh, yeah. I'm still washing dishes. Uh, I have uh, no ba- idea battle, this is going on. By the way, it's dishes? about this point. As oh, the no. ship is bearing down, that you see the thing flying as- aside it, those two huge leathery wings, uh, is in fact a red dragon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. So. <laughs> Gift uh, lore, baby. Excuse me? All right, so they're faster uh, yeah. than us, so this is going to be a fight, right? Like, that's the vibe. So this is inside baseball. Here's what's up. You guys can handle this situation however you want. Off the top of my head, like the three... Pillars of D&D, of course, there's combat. You guys can stand and fight, plan however you want. There's roleplay. You guys can try to talk your way out of this or try to bargain your way out of this, maybe. Uh, and there is exploration, which in this case would be like like a skill challenge to like try and escape or something like that. Like a skill-based encounter, basically, instead of a combat-based encounter. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, well, I guess... Uh, but whatever it is, you guys are going to decide fast. Uh, are there any nearby portals to anywhere that we know about? Uh, that's going to be a check from someone who knows that kind of stuff. So probably ah, not your, me. <laughs> your wizard or your, I was going to say, it's going to probably be from your wizard or your druid. Yeah, because I, I, I'm in the helm anyway. <laughs> so I, I, I was thinking the same thing. Like, is there any place cool. that we can escape very quickly? Somewhere to park the ship real right. quick. So here's what's up. Here's, if you guys portal. choose the escape route, here's how skill challenges work, which is pretty much uh, most of you guys are familiar with, but just so that everyone's on the same page. I set the difficulty of the challenge. You need a certain amount of successes. Three is a very easy challenge. This will be more than three, but you need a certain amount of successes and then you succeed in whatever it is you're trying to do. If you accumulate three failures, uh, before you accumulate the number of successes, then that's when the encounter happens. One or more failures might mean a setback, but the ultimate number of successes is going to dictate whether or not you succeed, which in this case, I assume would be escaping them without combat. The way you can succeed or fail is you declare you're going to make some sort of skill check. This can be aided by a spell or a different ability, but the most typical way to do it is just use your skills from your skill list. You pitch to me how you want to do it, or you can ask a question, hey, I want to try this, what kind of skill would that be? But you can also say, hey, um, you know, I want to use my acrobatics because I'm acrobatic. Okay, then I'd say, how, how do you do that? Pitch something to me. If I believe that's credible, then I'll set a DC, you make a roll, succeed or fail, I mark that down and the skill challenge continues. So in this case, finding a nearby portal, that's going to be a skill check from whoever's doing it. So in this case, Noir. Could so I, here, could, like, go ahead and make me, yeah, go ahead. Could I say that retroactively, I, I, on the sending stones, just shoot a little message to Finbar, just sort of <laughs> letting him know oh, the yeah. situation. Yeah. But it's so I, much funnier if he's just in the kitchen with the me channel music <laughs> going in the background. <laughs> I mean, whatever he does after he receives the message is his prerogative. Uh, but... Okay. Okay. Uh, so... I kind of hear that, and then all of a sudden, I, me and the pixie were having like a sing along, um, and just <laughs> bucket suds and, and water splashing all over the kitchen, and Love I'm snooping. gonna have to clean that up later. And uh, I hit the top of the stairs, I hit the deck, and um, and yeah, so all the pixies is you see just soap all over me. <laughs> uh, yeah, you come running up. Currently, uh, Enoch is cracking knuckles, stretching, and <laughs> looking worried. And you see, yeah, a ship bearing down on you. Beside it, the vision of a, a red dragon flying next to it. Yeah, straight up dragon. Um, At level six. Have any of us actually dealt with dragons before? 
I haven't. No, no. I don't I think don't that think there's so. any. Uh, no. there are, you guys have seen dragons. There's dragons in, like, Sigil that fly overhead sometimes. Cetra. There are red dragons in the City of Brass, but they're very rare. Dragons think themselves better than every other living creature. So they tend not Fair. to go to places where there's already royalty that thinks themselves better than other living creatures, such as the City of Brass. But they do exist. You, you know, some of you might have seen a dragon, but none of you have ever faced one before, certainly. Um, would Finbar would, uh, had, uh, run into a Gith Yankee patrol before? Would he know how tough they are? Go ahead and make a, a history check. History check. And, uh, this is before the, the skill challenge armor. starts, but... Oh, actually, uh, he has a minus two to this, oh, but, no. uh, rolled a 17. Hey! Okay. Total 17? Uh, total 15. Total 15. Yeah, so you definitely know Gith Yankee are basically, like, the pirates of the Astral Sea. They are nasty, they mean business. Definitely not unheard of that they like let people go. But uh, what, what's the uh, the effect with the uh, the plane wings where it's like, oh, like you hear about sometimes they let people go, but is that like half the cases or uh, like two percent mm. of the cases because the sur- those are the survivors. Survivorship survivor bias. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 survivorship yeah. bias. Yeah, like it's kind of you're you're not really sure. Is like is it survivorship bias. Like you know you, you heard a couple times people have encounters and they just kind of rage you and then dump you somewhere and you have to find your way back. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. they are definitely a warring people. They come from a city ruled over by a lich queen who oh. sends them out on war parties to take what's theirs, which they believe to be everything. Yeah. Not the fun No wonder they hang out with dragons. Yes. I mean, there is, we... with a higher history check, you might know why there's a dragon there. <laughs> I have no way of knowing, so. All right, well, All right. I, I don't think we lose anything by trying to run initially, yeah. but. Uh, why not? You know, if we mess up, we can still fight them. How many does it look like there are on the dragonfly? Go ahead and make a perception check. Yes. And then we're going to start the skill challenge. Good. All right, perception. There it is. 13. 13. At least they're still, like, they're pretty far away, but bearing down. At least the two that you can see. I think I'm cool with two Gith Yankee and one red dragon. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, <laughs> I admire your uh, I would say, actually, with a 13, also someone else piloting the ship. All right. You know, Three and one like, that's, that'd be a logic thing that you'd, you'd at least get. I'll be completely uh, honest. I'm mostly focusing on the dragon at this point. Um, <laughs> uh, easy to focus on. Uh, yeah, you guys all gather. Finn comes running up. Virla, you lean forward and consult the map of the Astral Sea you have in front of you. Go ahead and make me an Arcana check. Yes, sir. Uh, 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 mm. Arcana, okay. Oh, no. uh, 14. It's not bad. 14? Let's see. I, I, sh- I need to set DCs before I go forward. Um, I always forget <laughs> to do that. Because I would say, yeah, I, I'd say 14 would be a success. Uh, nice. Because it's not that hard. It's not that hard to look at the map. And yeah, <laughs> you guys would get an answer. You know, looking at the map and finding the nearest portal is is fine. You have to, on a dime, find that portal and then immediately set your head in. Right? Mm-hmm. That's, that's really what the Arcana check is about. You go ahead and look. The nearest portal to you, you've been traveling for a couple, like really like a couple hours now. Uh, so you're no longer nearest to hell. Instead, uh, the nearest portal is to the world Acheron. Is that good? Mm. Acheron is also known as the infinite battlefield. Mm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sounds festive. <laughs> we'll fit right in. Literally, it's, it's, cosmologically, it's next to hell. Uh, ah. And I fully rolled a random table to see which portal you were going to get. Because it's like I said, it doesn't matter. That's funny. The portals just exist. Gotcha. Um, and I was like, where's the, oh, <laughs> it's Acheron, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. 668, neighbor of the beast. <laughs> <laughs> right. Awesome. Well, that uh, might be a literal, uh, neighbor of the beast. <laughs> well, that might be a literal frying pan fire situation, but. Yeah. Uh, eh, you eh. guys feel uh, the whole ship banks under underneath you and turns as one of the three masts that's in the water fully comes up, skims the surface as the ship makes a hard turn to port to begin Virla under your control to begin making its way towards Acheron. I have good news and bad news. I have found a portal out of the Astral Sea. Woo, hey, great. where'd it go? It is to the Eternal Battlefield. Oh, let's go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that, that, that don't sound good. Yeah, that tracks. We'll probably only be in there for a little while, so, like, right? That'd be fine. Uh, so, knowing that we're heading for battle, but also that we are currently possibly in one, the flamethrower is on the deck, right? <laughs> uh, yes, the flamethrower is on the deck, not set up. All right. <laughs> oh, no. I So, movement in this world, it's oh, by, no. like, thought power, so I don't know if there's much... My, my first thought 
Sophia's first thought. Mm-hmm. It, Danny has an intelligence of very high. Sophia has an intelligence of very yes. low. Could I use the flamethrower positioned at the oh, back no. of the boat to sort of like <laughs> <laughs> speed us up? Like, you want to set up a nitro boost? I want to set up a nitro boost. I was going to ask if, if two of us try to pilot the ship at the same time, does it double our speed? <laughs> I know that it certainly technically... doesn't double your speed to have two people on the same time. Dang it. Uh, Oh my I know God. it's technically I not how transportation gonna... works in this realm, but uh, I'm wondering if, like, for a short burst, if that could give us just a little edge towards the board. I thought I we were like, just gonna. Like... I like the nitro boost idea. <laughs> um, I don't think pointing a flamethrower at the back, like it's a ship, even putting flame out the back, it's like it's not, it's not like, like it shoots a jet of flame. It's a it's a weapon. Like it's. It doesn't it's have like, a kickback that'll you know, move the it's ship. Not, yeah. If there was it's kickback, like it would have to be attached lower. to the ship also, right. not you. Right, yeah, right, right. that too. <laughs> like I like I like this idea. Yeah. yeah. Uh, simmer it down a little bit for me. You get nitro boosted all the way through okay. the portal, but okay. you leave the ship behind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just you and Acheron with a flamethrower and no sort of game out <laughs> like She's holding onto a helium balloon. <laughs> <laughs> to sort of game out this nitro boost idea, I also have the spell Thunder Wave. Oh no. And my follow up question is if we like tie the rope to Danny, she jumps off the. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> to and I thunder waved us because that does have a push effect to it in the spell. Would that then work? What level is thunder wave? I'm I, pretty sure it's. it's I would have to cast it at first, first level. First? What does it yeah, uh, I don't know the first level thunder wave is going to really boost your shit. Okay, in that case. Again, I like the idea. Yes. Is there, you know, is there. Um, is there something you want to do with like like engines or something? Yeah, like, it, really failing the nitro yeah, boost the, the helm initial converts, plan. Uh, uh, magical power over, to over force motive as we all know. Take us to warp but, nine. <laughs> yes, yeah. Yeah. I would like to. Um, if you call down, Danny, seeing what's happening, is gonna close the trap door, hustle her little aunt self down the stairs to the uh, engine room, and just start going into full Scotty from Star Trek mode. Yeah. Like, I'm just <laughs> overclocking energy, anything I can get my hands on, trying to get give any her, amounts of speed out Scott of these mechanics as I can, uh, just trying to make sure the ship is as functional as possible while we are pushing it to its limits. Uh, so any sort of, like, maintenance or upkeep in that regard. Rip to right. Nitro so Boost, you, know... you are on the list to add for later. <laughs> Uh, you know how to get this thing to to go faster. Mm-hmm. That's not a question. Can you get it to go faster without breaking? Yes. That should uh, yeah. be easy. I'm so, going to say that um, we don't want to get stranded in Acheron. <laughs> That'd be fine. Uh, that would be very <laughs> bad. Uh, there you go. So pushing it without breaking it. Let's set this at a DC of 18. Uh, yeah. Go ahead and use your Tinker's tools, okay, which... Okay. Do you have expertise in those? You're a sixth-level artificer. Uh, I believe I do. Let me double check. <laughs> Let me check my features and traits for uh, class features there. Your proficiency bonus is doubled for any ability check you make that uses your proficiency with a tool. So, yes. There you go. So, go ahead and make me a Tinker's tools check, and you're going to add intelligence and then double your proficiency to this. Nice. DC, what did I say? 18, 18. or 19? Yeah, 18. 18. 18. Yeah. DC 18. Uh, 10. 10. <laughs> <laughs> DC 10. You said actually said she could take 20 on this, so. Yeah. 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 Okay, okay, I didn't roll terribly. Uh, you said it's intelligence plus double my proficiency? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So natural 16 plus 6. Oh, yeah. It's got to bring oh, us to 22. Really good. Plus intelligence, <laughs> so that's 20 plus 3 to that baby. We are in the. We are above 25 on this. You're, yeah. you are, Give me that yeah, nitro you know boost! <laughs> The ship is your, um, uh, the ship is like your baby. Uh, you come down, uh, Plug falling right behind you, worried. Plug goes, like, right on top of the engine to, uh, like, watch you work fully in, like, little, like, nervous pounce mode. Uh, and you start going around. There's, first thing, yeah, you get, you get up the input. There's a pipe, essentially, that, that moves the, uh, magical energy drawn from the weave from the helm down to the force motivator. Increase the input on that. Just, you, you see, it starts to, like, the deft turn on the knob the metal starts to bulge just a little bit but doesn't break uh and then immediately yeah you go to there are dispersers that basically move the whole ship instead of just pushing the engine which would like blast it out the back of the ship oh, there's uh, specific parts that hold the whole ship together and you uh yeah also increase the strength of those it's gonna be gonna be taxing might need to spend a day 
like uh, just tuning things up mm. after all this is over uh, in some sort of you know dry dock the ship. But the ship is going to hold together for this. That is your second success. Boom. Everyone else feels the ship start to push faster. Uh, all three masts start to creak. And yeah, you got to so- sort of subway surf for a moment yeah. as your bodies catch like, up with the momentum whoa, of the ship. A full like... 30 seconds after the ship has already started moving faster, Danny slams the sending stones that are pulled down the ship like, oh, you guys might want to hold on. <laughs> no longer helpful. Oh, Finbar's already strapped down. Like, oh, yeah. Seatbelts like, on. Mm-mm. Uh-huh. Mm-mm. Austin, also, that was some uh, A-plus Arcano Techno Battle. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. Very good. I was like, <laughs> I thought about writing down Techno Babble, um, before and then I didn't because I forgot, so I had to just make that up. <laughs> we need uh, a random like techno babble chart, yes. you know, like yeah. roll a couple D100s on it. Roll, but not, roll yeah, a D100, pick uh, from the first column. Not for the neutron flow and yeah, yeah. yeah. The redirect auxiliary are, power. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Level so here's completed. what's up: one more success, one more success, and you guys are gonna make it through the portal to Akron, and things are gonna get easier. <laughs> uh, Differently. Uh, so we need, Weird. we need one more check. Uh, another rule of skill challenges is you may not attempt the same skill twice. So Danny, okay. now that you've performed a Tinker's Tools yes. check, you cannot attempt another Tinker's, tinker Tools check. Someone else could. You, Danny, you could try something else yourself. Uh-huh. And it's not like everyone needs to go. It's not like, mm. you know, now that Virla and Danny have gone, it's not like it needs to be Finbar, Kiana. But of course, the way that, you know, you guys are going to start running out of good skills if only Virla or only, only Danny starts making checks. <laughs> Let's see so. if there's any way I can make this an insight check for me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Want that tasty plus seven one of these days. Hey, listen, uh, if you can justify it to me, you can make the roll, you know? Uh, I would like to pray to a god. Does that give me plus seven? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, DC 30, <laughs> since how, you've never wait, been how religious close before this point. <laughs> yeah, how close are they? <laughs> these ships good question you guys are at two successes you're just starting to boot out uh, let me let me ask how close do you want to be because okay so far you're keeping on your tail you have a lot of speed if you want to get in range of something then well you could feasibly slow down to do it but i'd say probably like 200 feet 200. like you're out of range of, okay uh, you see um you see one of them uh or actually two on the front burn around what look like harpoon flingers uh-huh. um you're definitely out of range of those because they haven't flung harpoons at you yet all right. Um, I hope they try. I can catch those. <laughs> I want to hit, hit with my wonk longbow. Yes. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to say, hey, Ginger, get the longbow. And uh, Pixies, come bring the longbow off of... Uh, I don't particularly use it. Um, but And I take Ginger and I put her on the arrowhead. Oh, um, my God. Essentially, <laughs> if I can hit this thing, I can, I can hit either the dragon or one of the ships and I can knock it back 15 feet. Just give us a little bit more room to get away. Oh, we're doing right. force. Is there a way I can t- do a help action on that with my inside? <laughs> uh, no. Uh, well, I don't <laughs> aim for that part. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I like this idea. Uh, is there a, what, is there like a strength save or something involved with yes. the, um... So, one, yeah, okay. it's so... technically outside of the inner range, which is 150 feet, so I'd be shooting at disadvantage, but if it hits, then it has to make a strength save, and then it's knocked back 15 feet. Um, hold okay. on, unless this so, decides to acquire a sign. You as a ranger, or the pixie, or... Uh, swarm keeper, yeah. Oh. I love this idea. Just so you know, for, like, weighing your odds, the dragon is definitely going to be harder to hit. The ship is just a big ship made out of wood. The dragon is going to be harder to hit, but the dragon does not have as good... Like, moving a whole ship, it's going to have, like, a hefty strength save. The dragon mm-hmm. does not have, you have nearly as good a strength save. It's still a dragon, but... Right. So yeah, that's your... Like, you know, one's going to be ha- ha- easy, harder to hit, but easier to move. The other's going to be easier to hit, but harder to move. And you need both to go off for a success, but I like this a lot. Uh, I, I don't have a lot of options, so this is the only thing I'm going to do. Um, All right. So if Keanu wants to give me the help action, I can roll this Yeah, straight. yeah. If not... I definitely want to do that. I've got nothing else to do right now, at least. Yeah, because... So here's how help actions work. My game is you have to be better at the thing you're doing than the person you're helping. Otherwise, oh. they would be helping you, right? Okay, yeah. Uh, but you do have a higher dex than I do. Finbar, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So, uh, let me, well, what, what's my, my dex is 17, yeah. yes. Statistically, so minus, I probably do. Minus 13. Do you have yes. proficiency okay. with all, uh, do you proficiency with, with martial weapons? Um, I think, let me just check. Uh, that would be... Yeah, you're a monk, right? Yeah, I've got a proficiency with simple weapons, yeah. Uh, uh, I think mm. a bow's a martial weapon, so you wouldn't have proficiency. Mm. Uh, but plus what dexterity? You have plus uh, three? 
It's a plus three, yeah. Yeah, and Finn, what's your bonus to hit with the bow? Uh, plus four. Uh, okay, yeah. So that's so, plus proficiency. Yeah, Finn is a little bit better at it. Than oh, okay, so all right. I don't know that you can actually help him shoot. All right, well, maybe the next time they try and shoot a harpoon, I'll just use my reaction to catch it. <laughs> that would be, that. see, that would be... That's that a pretty. That's good thinking. But they need that to actually do it. I can't like. <laughs> they need to get in range. See, yeah. Like, Let's if you fail and, and they ca- like, if you it. make a failure and they catch up, then that's gonna happen. At which point you can do that. Perfect. Pretty dope. So. Um. Okay. Then I will just use uh bonus action. I will separate strike then, uh, to give myself advantage on this hit. Hot damn. Okay. Who are you shooting? Shipper. Uh, shipper dragon. Uh, I'm gonna say, let's do the ship. For that. Ship. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so this is straight. Uh, let me double check the AC of. I think the AC of wood is just fifteen. Yeah, fifteen. Okay. Nineteen. <gasps> Nineteen. Yeah, okay. baby. Yeah. Boom goes flying out, and you see the arrow <laughs> with Ginger, the little fairy. Uh, for a brief moment, you hear. <laughs> uh, <laughs> she disappears. Um, all right, let me double check the uh, strength and growth of this ship. Are all of your fairies named after spices? Yeah, all <laughs> of them. I thought they were named after the characters from Gilligan's Island. <laughs> no, they're the Spice Girls. <gasps> I, I was going to say. <laughs> Petition to call our party the Spice Girls. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it fits, too, because we had all that spicy omelet discourse in the first episode. It, like, thematically works. Yeah, yeah. Proficiencies. It's all I guess it together. doesn't really have proficiency with the strength save, so it's got oh, a yeah. good strength score, but it's actually okay. not that much better than the dragon. Yeah. So the uh, DC is 16. What is the DC? DC 16. Okay, so he's got to roll a 12. If he rolls a 12, he makes this. Huh? That's a natural two. Natural two. Uh, <laughs> boom! You see the arrow goes off, and uh, Finbar, go ahead and describe how this could possibly is that. I, maybe it's late to ask this, but does it specify the size of a creature? No, uh, it does not. I, it does I, it? I okay. double checked. I double checked, and it does not specify. Amazing. Force effects are Tiny fantastic. Tiny okay. judo throwing the entire ship. <laughs> yeah. Um, so go ahead and exp- rationalize to me how your Feywild uh, swarm magic with one pixie that you sent is gonna move the ship. Back. Um. So uh, the rest of the pixies all of a sudden like crowd on my arm, and they 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 um you know send all their energy to Ginger. Uh, <laughs> as she holds on to this arrow, it flies um, the 200 feet uh, across the astral sea. She kisses her fist, and uh, as uh, the arrow impacts uh, the hull of the ship, or she punches it, yeah. um, <laughs> and knocks it 15 feet away. You uh, know that bit in, uh, um, you in Avengers silvery. when the Hulk punches the Leviathan, <laughs> yeah. and it just <laughs> crumples up? <laughs> Uh, it's not going to do that, but you definitely bought yourself some time uh, as you see the arrow traces with a thin bit of silvery light arcs, and there's just a trail of that light behind it as it flies, hits the ship, and the whole thing shudders. The two Githyanki on the helm grab on to the uh, spear launchers and hold themselves aboard as, uh, boom, the whole thing shudders backwards. Buys you guys just, that's three successes, buys you guys just enough time. The portal appears in front of you. You see, I believe it's flame red, actually. Ooh. Oh, huzzah! Flame red, yes. Uh, you see a flame red portal. Looks inviting. Here <laughs> in the water before you. Uh, the ship, faster than you've ever gone before through one of these things, kind of like skims across the top and then turns and plummets in. For a moment, there's darkness, and then you rise up out of what appears to be just a flame coming out of it's like a big, like, smoking wreck of some kind. And you guys come sailing through that immediately. It's like, you know, the first the first Star Trek movie and the first new <laughs> Star Trek movie yes. uh, when they uh, drop yes. out of the surprise attack on, yeah, yep. when they drop out and it's just chaos. Wreckage. That's exactly what happens. You guys yes. drop uh, <laughs> into this plane and you see there are, you're floating in what looks like an infinite, like, red orange glowing void there's just if you like look in the distance it just gets obscured by like smoke eventually and all around you you see these giant metal cubes uh, it's sort of hard to peg distance oh, but they are like kind of like asteroids pinging around some of them are like house sized but most of them are like they could be like cities and there are even some that are so far away it's hard to tell like are they small and close or are they the size of a continent and just really far away you appear and there's two of them like slowly 
slowly for their size, actually quite quickly coming at each other. Immediately the sound hits your ear. Sounds like just the ring of a thousand swords banging against each other. This whole plane is deafeningly loud. And as you see two cubes like collide in the distance, there, there's almost a moment where there's no sound and then it hits you all. Um, you can almost, uh, almost like standing too close to a firework. You can hear it off wow. in the distance. The like, as you uh, approach through, you sail out of this fire and through the smoke. The two that are in front of you, they're slowly moving towards each other. Uh, you see tons of figures standing on each face. Wherever you stand, gravity is just down. Running along, like uh, you see an, an army curve over one corner and come to face another one. An army of, like, looks like skeletons and like and withered husks of bodies wrapped in all these ancient armors against army of red-skinned, broad-nosed hobgoblins just facing down each other in this enormous, endless war. Welcome to Acheron, the infinite battlefield. Cozy. Great. Awesome. What would you like um, to do? Uh, how long before we can plane shift out of here? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you used well, your daily plane shift, so... What? Rip. <laughs> uh, you can always go back through the wait, portal. Wait, you can go wait. back out it's the way It's once a day? No. No. Yep. Oh. You can cast plane shift once a day yeah. with the with the thing. Okay. Uh -oh. hey, well, I didn't know that. <laughs> we never had to plane shift more than once a day, so uh, this is new to me as well. As we're I was sort not of... the original pilot of the ship. <laughs> As we're oh, entering so in here, I'd things. like to keep an eye behind us to make sure we're not being followed into this portal by, like, a red dragon and two gith, per se. Honestly, if that does happen, I think we can just juke around him and go back through the portal. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, I'd say, no, it's fairly obvious. Yeah, they, they follow through. The chase is not yet done. They've, Dang they've it! they followed you through. Dang it. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. All but right. you guys have reached three successes. Uh, as, uh, as you guys come out... Let me, let me, uh, no, three successes was you made it to Akron, so now you have a lot more options. Mm -hmm. All right, so there's a bunch of, like, okay. floating Borg cubes everywhere, right? <laughs> we, 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 yeah, I don't yes. think we want to get near those. <laughs> We've now done more Star Trek references. Yeah, Star that's true. Uh, please keep a tally in the uh, back at home. <laughs> Will Star Trek or Star Wars be referenced more in this episode? Truly, it could go either way. Um, <clears throat> I've got a bad feeling about this. <laughs> All right, we're back on balance. I did the astral sea run in only 12 button parsecs. <laughs> uh, yes. Um, this is already so bad. Does anyone have any skills they would like to bring bring to bear? There's chaos all around you. There's so lots going these on. These cubes so. are like shifting. Are there any of them that look like they're like moving towards each other in a way that if we, we speed it on through... They oh, yeah, the two us. in front of no. you are, are gonna collide. Okay, okay, here's the my... You, you wanna here's trench run this here's, shit? Here's my pitch. Yeah. Uh, oh, they do, they have, uh, they're not perfect cubes either. There's like pockmarks. There's like oh, fully yes. like big holes in them that like go through or like maybe inside. You can't really tell from here. Yeah. There's so definitely... Uh, they look like cheese? Here's my pitch. Are cheese cubes? We uh, big yeah, cheese cubes? Yeah, they kind of look like big cheese cubes. We try and skirt okay. on through these two to lose the guys behind us. We do? My... My thought is that, like, if we have, like, Virla trying to do that as speedily as possible, um... <laughs> uh, Finbar, can I, can I borrow your pixies? Can they do, like, aerials? What? Like, displays? Can they make shapes and shit? What? Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> what? <laughs> here's, here's what I'm uh, thinking. Please, uh, uh, please. If, if... Please explain to me. <laughs> What the hell you mean? I speak Gith, so I'm thinking like if I direct the pixies to make a big arrow and point in the other direction, which is like watch out in Gith, <laughs> so that we have a moment to, s so that we can slide on through while they're distracted and hopefully they don't make it through the same God. hole as us. Uh huh. God, Enoch must be regretting. Watch out in Gith. <laughs> Enoch. Um. Uh. Yeah, if anyone wants to, like, talk to Enoch or anything, they definitely can as well. Enoch, um, this is how you say watch out, right? <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Yes? Enoch, do you have any... Explain your intention. Uh, to distract uh. them so that it's easier for us to skirt through without being followed. Because I think if we can get, like, out of their line of sight, we can do a little fancy bobbing and weaving and hopefully be able to, you know, lose them a little bit, shake them. I'm starting to feel like these are the things we need to worry least about in this dimension. <laughs> Uh, he leads, he grabs a rope and leans over to look back at them, uh, to, like, make sure they're following, and then he comes, he turns back to you, he goes, 
They followed you into the plane of infinite war. I don't know they're concerned about their own safety enough to pay attention to a sign. Uh, That's extremely fair. What if the sign was an arrow pointing to one of the armies and it said, that dude called your mom a hoe? Would that be distracting? (laughs) (laughs) They're easily angered, but also relentless. So Mm. even odds? Hmm. I don't know. I think it's worth a try. <laughs> I, uh, mm. I do think that the, the crux of the idea of trying to juke through the cubes is probably the most important part here, but I really think we should give it due time to this. What can we say to distract them? I'm so sorry, guys. Do we even have enough pixies for an aerial display of that, like, granularity? Nope. Nope, <laughs> okay. <do> There's <laughs> got, like, seven. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. Six now. We, we can get them to spell out the YMCA. <laughs> well, well, Ginger will find her way back home. Don't worry about this. Oh. Yeah, she's Faye. So if she died, she's back yeah. in the Feywild. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. She went, uh, which also she did bug on a windshield, so. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but she's back in the Feywild. Wild. <laughs> she went out like a hero. Okay, practical question. How many more hours before we can plane shift back? Well, we uh, just plane shifted. Let's see, you plane shifted about two or three hours ago, so... What? 21? Yeah, yeah you plane shifted back uh, here. Okay. To make, like, a skill check of this whole situation, could but I... But you can pretend- get back through the portal. There's a dragon between us and the portal. Yeah. You That's wanna, true. You wanna- Juke, we could juke Man. them out, like do a quick U-turn. Yeah, that's okay. actually that's true. Yeah, yeah. They, they just, they they just follow this. us back out, right? Yeah. I think we need to lose them before we can get back through or else they're just going to keep I don't following. know they if that's they do accurate. Have, I mean, listen, juking them out is definitely possible. Um, just like a sheer, like, can we get around them? But it's going to be a high DC because they're s- smaller, faster, and more maneuverable. Than you. Like you're piloting like a galleon. Mm-hmm. They're in like mm-hmm. a big drive fly. I think well, we're, we're running I think out of we options and we might this. have to fight these could, guys. Could I make maybe an investigation? Gonna, if you want a trench run, check to see if there's a good tre- route. trench run. Is a is a ship flying? Yes, a good route is exactly uh, exactly. Uh, would it be investigation or perception? Oh, I really um, hope it's a investigation. Route, that's a, that's a <laughs> that is a great use of an ability. Um, definitely, you're going to be able to do that. Uh, a like, trench run that's going to be like inside? ship maneuvering, which is going to be like a, a piloting check. <laughs> Which Mm, is, uh, well, if someone tries that, I'll explain more virulent. But uh, yeah, you want to um, go ahead and roll an investigation check. Uh, Just finding, you're just looking for something big enough. You're you're looking for two things, something big enough to fit the ship and something deep enough to like, it's, you're not just going to run into a crater. I'd say call this like a DC, like 14. Go ahead and roll. It's like not, it's not going to be too hard to find that. Oh, natural 20. (laughs) Oh, and that's like, yes. Yeah. So you immediately spy as one corner of a cube is turning. Like you see one that's about to disappear. Like okay, we can make it in there. You direct Virla that way, uh, and yeah, you feel it. You feel the ship mm-hmm. subtly tilt to get ready to make this bank into this hole. That's another success. You guys are at four successes, no failures. What are you guys so worried about? This is fine. <laughs> oh yeah, everything about this situation is fine. <laughs> the moment the. The moment the party gets cocky, that's the end of it all. Uh-huh. We smash into one of these cubes, like, we're fucked. <laughs> you guys are so go. fucked. Guys, it's yeah. like, I assume it's Virla just is like the end of time. a new hope where they have to fly oh, into the Death Star to blow it up yeah. in the inside. So it's like, what, 120 feet in six seconds? So that's Virla's 20 like feet a second. You just go that fast. <laughs> at, actually, <laughs> faster <them> because, <laughs> yeah. Like, um, <laughs> if you've seen the, uh, oh, it's probably not probably not a great time to talk about Overwatch, but the the, <laughs> the short with Ash where just a, a bead of yeah. oil runs down. Uh, down pops oil. Yeah. That's yeah. exactly. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'll send Plug over yeah. to, to Virla to, like, lick the oil <laughs> to clean him up. Yeah. Keep it Virla, clear. Virla, oh. more focused than you've ever seen him, and a cat comes over <laughs> with a, a, a tongue literally coated in sandpaper and just... Scratches <laughs> off his this face. Is not a, this is not a great time to maybe reveal <laughs> that, Vir- that my head canon for Virla is that in programming, when, when Danny was programming him or reprogramming him or plug, something happened where like Virla's synapses fire in like wrong ways whenever plug is around. Like some sort <laughs> no! of interference. No! <laughs> uh, this, this is my head Gave canon. Gave him allergies? The, yeah, this is my head <laughs> canon that Virla is allergic to plug. <laughs> 
<laughs> You've got like opposite Aww. polarities somewhere important and <laughs> mm-hmm. But yep. not not enough to actually affect the skill challenge. Okay. Oh okay. My <laughs> your, God. your eyes water just a little yes. bit of grease. <laughs> <laughs> would it be cre- would it be credible to, to then have a piloting skill check uh, to sort of uh, jump off of Danny's? Absolutely. So okay, cool. uh, yeah, so piloting skill check is gonna be is gonna be the thing that you use for your spells. So this is your intelligence, your uh, your spell ability, intelligence. If you have proficiency with any kind of vehicle, I don't know if specifically with air vehicles is even a thing in D&D, but water and land vehicles are. If you have really proficiency in vehicles, you get to add Really? Hell yeah. Vehic- there's- oh, hell yes. I didn't know that. You get to add your yeah. proficiency to this then. Okay, awesome. So yeah, go ahead and add intelligence plus proficiency. You're making, you're you're going okay. full uh, trench run. Is there a way to R- help DC. this? DC, I'm going to call this Come on, man. hard DC. It's DC, DC 20. Bro, Okay. is there okay. any way to like uh, help You're not going to blow up the ship. I don't know. Like, is there a way to take the help action? You're not. You're not better at. Uh, I'm not at better at piloting. Than he is. Uh, I'm not, but I can act as a spotter if that's helpful. I was gonna say, I you want to act as a spotter? On Go yeah. ahead. Okay. Uh, you want to do an assistant check? Here's what's up. You're gonna make a, okay. a lower. You want to. Uh, you want to do like a perception check or something? Uh. To like uh, guide the light. I prefer to make like an insight check by any. You know, <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if okay. I'm let's call this a perception check. Let's call this okay. a twelve perception, if it's a perception, perception check, check. I should probably make it. If, if you want to do, uh, yeah. whoever wants to lead, uh, to yeah, yeah, yeah. My perception's have a, plus four. I have plus ten. Oh. Okay, yeah, oh. okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Finbar, okay. Oh, Finbar, buddy. DC, DC twelve perception check. If you succeed okay. on this, I'm gonna lower the DC by two down to eighteen. Okay. For your luck. Fair enough. Yeah, I got an eighteen. Oh, oh nice. yeah, hell yeah, yeah. So you go and you're immediately ready to call out, and you see, yeah, like where he's about to bank. There's like a lip of metal that's like uh, torn and uh, sticking out, and you're immediately able to be like, oh, uh, yeah. You call out to him to like make the bank a little bit wider than he should have. And that's and basically that's what you'll be doing as he continues this trench run. All right, Virla, go ahead. Roll intelligence plus proficiency plus two. Come on, Virla, and please do a good job. That's a natural 20. Woo! Oh my god! Baby! Woo! Hell yeah! Uh, so that's plus nine. Yeah, 29. 29? Wow. Jesus Juke. Christ. Juke. Juke. Oh my Juke. god. Juke. Juke. Guys, that's two successes. Vela puts his hand on one like tiny little uh, button and it just swoop. <laughs> <laughs> you, what does um, this button do? Autopilot. <laughs> and he's telling me the dragon just flattens into the side. Hell yeah. The, the ship, fuck out of here, uh, the ship Tokyo drifts yeah. around <laughs> swings, and then Hell full yeah. power forward do, through. Do, do, um, It's got three do, masts, do, so it's huge. But uh, the gravity is, there's like a gravity generator to keep you guys going down. You guys, so you guys are stuck to the ship and it's like turning in this thing. We're going full Star Wars trench run yes. uh, through the center of this cube. Uh, fantastic. Um, you guys see there's like troops running all around through inside this cube here. You see a couple of these skeletons that are dressed in like the plate, see the ship going past and they're going to trump no. off and uh, land on the deck of the ship. So uh, that's right, it's a combat me? in the middle of a skill challenge, baby. So I summoned a point of order. I did summon an Eldritch Cannon when the Gith first appeared, so yep, it would be around. Uh, can I have set that to a force ballista? Because that's my go-to. Hell yes. And as I see these skeletons jumping, is there any chance Danny could like react to try and hit one or two of them to try and keep multiple ones from the jump? Because the force ballista knocks them back, try and just keep them from getting onto the ship's gravity. Yeah, we'll say, so here's what's gonna happen. We'll say that they're landing on the ship. When, when their turn hits in combat, that's when they're gonna land on the ship. So if you go before them in combat, you can fully blast them out of the air and without even killing them, maybe keep them off the ship. Sounds good. Go ahead and uh, enter roll 20. <sighs> This is such a mess. Everything oh, about this is That's a nightmare. Is. I'm having a great time. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> no, it's not that many. You guys are doing well. If you guys had accumulated a failure, then there would be a lot. But oh, you guys are not. You guys are so far so not. It's actually probably <laughs> how he's doing. <laughs> Make an insight. <laughs> oh, sure. Enoch is just going full Doctor Strange at the helm, trying to run the permutations and see how we get out of this alive. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it feels so bad. I was like, oh, let's be nice. Let's be nice and drop him off at Sigil. Oh, now, now he's got to deal with his mortal enemy. How do you oh, feel geez. about Avernus instead? I hear it's really <laughs> Skeletons aren't his mortal enemy. It's the Gith that are the problem. This is true. Um, I rolled a 15, actually. He's pretty hard to read, but like this is his day is not going great. But uh, also you, you saved him from being killed. So 
that's he's, he's pretty happy about that. Yeah, he seems to be taking all of this in stride. He is uh, above all a <laughs> practiced warrior, um, and like he's madness. very mind over matter. So, <gasps> I have a question. Can the skeletons launching themselves at us count as ranged attacks <laughs> for me to catch and throw back? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's Please. The question. That's the question. I promise you'll get to throw something back one day. Okay. Hey, if the the bad guys get close enough, they're going to shoot harpoons at you. Let Keanu throw something. <laughs> Let is this, catch something is this our friendly car fire. chase episode? Are we in that point in the Indiana Jones movie where you spend 30 minutes just running through different locales in a very fast vehicle? Because it's starting to feel like maybe we're in our car chase episode. Ah, uh, yeah, no, it's our patented yeah, gonna, DreamWorks getting from point A to point B sequence. <laughs> Yeah. That's yes. your that's another thing. We're gonna Star run Wars past the you. pyramids of Giza. It's like that scene in the Sonic yeah. movie. You know when he's running really fast? What? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. It's exactly when he's like throwing the rings. Scene, the Sonic movie, the, wait, which the I saw the scene in the Sonic movie? Yeah, the you have the cinematic seen milestone Sonic the Sonic movie. <laughs> yeah. Unironically a very fun time. <laughs> uh, yeah, James Marsden was great. <laughs> Jim Carrey. I love how Idris oh, Elba was like, guys, I won't be doing a sexy voice for Knuckles as if he has a choice. Oh my god. I was gonna say, well, he, he knows the Let's, effect he has on can we Can we close himself. this can of worms, please? <laughs> <laughs> how, how high would I can have to roll to make Idris Elba somehow everywhere. canon in this in the universe of rolling? Um, Maybe Enoch is voiced I'd by Idris Elba. I have spend some time oh. learning well, to do the plain, Idris Elba the voice. Escape. If you'd like a Patrick yeah. Warburton to exist, that one. <laughs> <laughs> Can we have Buzz Lightyear of Star Command? Yes. Uh, <laughs> Buzz Lightyear ex machina. I don't know if I could do a Tim Allen. <laughs> uh, but I did just watch a video today on how to play him in D&D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Patrick the one that he played uh, the that's the Kronk. Yeah, exactly. You want... Oh, right, you uh, played yeah. him in the cart. Oh, my God, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, I remember. That was like your Star Command. Oh, that was, that's some childhood. All right, everyone roll initiative, please. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. All right, all right. Well, let me remove all oh, your turns. damn it. Yeah, that Rolling was not a great so well. roll. I'm rolling so well and then the time that we actually have to. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, at least you rolled a 15. <laughs> well, yeah, but I rolled a 7. <laughs> Kiana, yeah, what is your really deck? Suddenly. What's the uh, witch? What is your yours. dexterity? I assume it's higher than mine. My dexterity? My dexterity is 17, but I have a thing that gives me a bonus on initiative. I think it's a Oh, no. We talk? rolled the same initiative, so whoever has the higher dex goes first. It's definitely you. Oh, uh, correct. But I was <laughs> curious to my ass. Yes. <laughs> yeah. This is the second fight where we've gone on the exact same round. It's just, you know, the girls, the girl gang of the Paraspora truly has an unbreakable bond, even though we've only known each other for three days. And also, I think I've done more damage to you than most enemies. <laughs> yes, you have. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It's so good. All right. Time for me to take a fuck ton of damage again. Oh, Finbar, no. <laughs> Everyone, our new job for this fight is to protect Finbar at all costs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We need to keep the healer up. We cannot have the healer and the tank be the same person. <laughs> no, no. That's oh, I should plug fun. is on the do- deck. Oh no, who still has health potions on them? Draw. I think I do. I should also draw plug. Actually, in. I think I do too. I have so many little guys yeah. to go. Oh, I meant to make a token for plug. I'll do that for next week. Sweet. I drew a little green circle for him. Uh, dear audience, I constantly forget that plug is not just a fun little bit that we get to do, but actually is a fully functional homunculus and could, say, in theory, be yeah. useful. To come back. <laughs> Can do like a lot of damage, actually. Like it's yep. pretty good. It's no, it's no uh, battlesmith, but it, it's no slouch. Danny is like standing on the ladder, half out of the trap door, half in, just sort of like ready to run and fix things if need be, ready to run out and fire at things if need be. Cannon right in front, plug off giving Virla an allergic reaction. All good stuff is happening. <laughs> <laughs> Finn, you're up first. Yeah, you are, uh, Virla is currently concentrating and probably is gonna be need, need to use his action to keep you guys from crashing into stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, let's, just, during uh, this let's just make sure he can do that. I don't have my guy anymore, I don't think, so I can't, and I can't do that, so. You don't have your guy? I, it's, it's once per long rest, I can- I No! Can Go ahead, make me just a wisdom check to see if you, uh, DC 10, to see if you were on point enough to remember to do that. Uh, <laughs> uh wisdom. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, uh oh, eight. Well, from a certain point of view, uh, I would argue that it would actually take him wisdom to remember to dismiss it. So perhaps no. by failing. Mm. High rolls sorry. good, low rolls bad in D&D. Yeah. <laughs> 
I roll good. <laughs> this is better. Really interesting. This is narrative. The, by the way, the it's kind of hard to see the doors because of the icon I use, but the doors mm-hmm. are on either side of the thing here. There's these like, oh. little arches that are. Oh, I thought mm-hmm. it was just like one of those Star Wars force like the the force nope. field bubble. It's a full. It's a glass and dome. An exit. Oh, okay. That's nah, a glass dome. It's got nice like uh, patterns on it too. Like there's inlaid gold. It's very pretty. Cool. Shiny. Let's not let it get ruined. Oh, it's my turn. Okay. Damn. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Huh. Uh, um, yeah, surprisingly you went first. Oh, I got a key on it from a Danny. Cool. Suck it, Danny. <laughs> wait, wait. Oh, no. <laughs> the skeletons are there? Yeah, they're falling awesome. towards you guys. They're they falling. jumped off. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Think of the ship as, like, rotating in space, and these are two edges inside the cube. You know, it's imp- it would be impossible on a 2D map to show the full circle that's around you guys. So think of that got as, it. like, the, the, uh, the, okay. this is the cross section, and they've, they're kind of falling towards you. Convenient that you had this uh, map of the two <laughs> cubes crushing together slowly, ready to go. Huh. Yeah. There's something you, know, you threw together. Sometimes you can't predict your party, like if they're gonna flamethrower their teammates. Uh, and sometimes you know <laughs> that when you put a big trench run in front of them, they're gonna run the trench. Uh, That's fair. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, okay, also, he cool. Said he dog eared uh, Akron. Mm. So. Yes, I yeah I I I, uh, I was like man uh, I, I was gonna choose a place from the lower planes because it's way hard and I was like you know what it should be random I should roll and then I rolled and it was Akron and I was like the dice could not be more on my side. <laughs> on the plus side, we now know how to title these episodes: Frying Pan and then Into the Fire. <laughs> oh hell, oh, that's, that's good. So good. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm gonna move out here. <laughs> a um, week earlier, they're gonna be like, what does that mean? They're, <laughs> they're this high up. Yeah, they're like, yeah, they're, they're basically, okay. they're going to land on the deck, like, right here. Um, and that's cool. how far away they are is how high up they are. Cool. I'm going to I'm gonna bring one down uh, a lot quicker than he expected. And I'm going to throw it. <laughs> cool. So, yeah, he's going to take some, he's going to take some falling damage. Okay. Uh, that's a uh, 24 to hit. Yeah, yeah, that'll hit him. Okay. Uh, cool, you're going for red. Piercing. Yes. Uh, that is uh, seven piercing, um, and Swarm's gonna do a little bit of damage. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Which, by the way, because of the number of successes you've accumulated, there's also like hobgoblins all along here, and you see a few of them go to make the jump. Uh, but Virla turns the ship, uh, and they all miss uh, landing on the deck, and instead plummet. Woo! <laughs> Hell yeah! Don't scratch yeah. my ship! Get your claws off that siding! It took weeks to polish. Ugh. Focus, focus. <laughs> uh, we're gonna we're gonna narratively uh, change mechanics here. One of them lands, Han is scraping on, and then Tan no! just goes over it, <laughs> kicks his head, <laughs> slaps him off. Hey, it, 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 so that, really that can be your held action. Is is the um is the uh the cannon shoots that guy. He's just trying to fall. Oh. <laughs> All right, Finn, uh, uh, you hit. So go ahead, roll uh, yeah. damage. Yeah, uh, a total of um, uh, not great, eight damage across the board. Okay. Um, and then uh, how close does it pull them? It pulls them 10 feet closer. Okay, cool. So they'll take an additional 1d6 uh, for 10 feet of falling uh, as you accelerate them. Cool. No bonus Boom. action. Yeah, that, no that, bonus one, that one plummets into the deck. Crunch. And yeah, I should describe them. They are, they're not really skeletons um, so much as they're definitely undead, but you see there, part of them is skeletal, but like a, a lot of their flesh is still there and it's sort of withered not rotting like a zombie so to speak but like uh still still tensed um and, but just like kind of grain pulled tight uh and they're wielding each of them has like a spear uh they have a like, gold helms over their head and there's like glowing red eyes uh and they're wearing tarnished must have been brass at some point but just tarnished armor uh, and carrying these like tall tower shields super dope okay uh that's a great turn kiana uh one of these skeletons slams into the deck the other ones are falling down currently. What will you do? Well, uh, I had my astral arms out earlier, but those last 10 minutes, are they are they gone? No, this has all been less than 10 minutes. 10 minutes they would have caught Oh, okay. Them, so. All right. In that case, I will been. make sure to mark off the key cost of that real quick, because um, mm-hmm. it's actually important to combat now. Uh, all right. Yeah, so that and means you do I have can't your face the... up. 
Oh my god, I never just oh. face. Yeah, everyone, oh, everyone yeah. by the way, has seen Kiana. Um, she has, uh, there's a glowing visage over her own face that's exactly like the, uh, the arms. Except it kind of has, like, it's not, like, smooth. It kind of has, like, little spines on the bottom. Like, little, little, like, kind of, so it's kind of serrated along the jaw. Um, and there appears to be, it's kind of featureless, but there seems to be, like, one kind of eye in the middle of her forehead. Uh, or at least what would be an eye and just a, like, smooth, glowing kind of, like, face shield sort of deal. Ooh, yeah. Okay. I can't okay. see what it looks like yet, but it no, gives you me some pretty not. cool <laughs> bonuses. Uh, it does. Well, first of all, let me just move so I'm a little bit more centrally located for when these Johns land. Johns. Yeah. Sorry, you've infected <laughs> me. Uh, I was gonna right. say we don't we don't we don't use that word on this podcast. <laughs> oh, sorry, yes, sorry. We do. Uh, yeah, uh, you, okay. if you land right there, you'd incur an attack of opportunity, but you're plenty fast enough to just go around. Which yeah, is that's what I. You'd want to do. Yeah, 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 that's definitely. Fine. Okay. Uh, well, it would be pretty fun to try. But the thing is, they're fa- it's not like they're going to change trajectory in midair to run away. <laughs> so. Uh, uh, no, they are not. All righty. Well, also, they're uh, they're undead, so. They can't be intimidated. How, how much you might be able to? How much you be able to? It possible. It just might not be easy to scare them. Okay. Well, in that case, uh, I will. But you are in the middle of a skill challenge too, so you know. That is true. Right. Um, we got this, guys. All right. Well, you know what? I'll just I'll start by punching the one that's down. Uh, just make things a little it. bit easier on myself. There it is. Okay. Uh, the astral self melee attack plus seven. Hit. Ah, oh, disgusting. Well, I rolled an eleven. Uh, total. Eleven will not hit. That's about what I expected. It's because these guys I have ro- pretty good armor. Well, I rolled a four, so I wasn't expecting it to hit. Uh. Okay. Second attack for free. Oh, that's much better. That's a that's a 19 unadjusted, so 26 to hit. Hell yes. Okay. Oh, cool. Max damage. Uh, that's 10 force damage. 10. Not bad. Yeah. This guy uh, does not look good. He's okay. already kind of battered, and your fist seems to go like right through his armor uh, and collide with body on that second punch. Awesome. Now, uh, because these three guys are gonna drop next turn, I am going to use my bonus action to uh, patient defense, so I can dodge. <laughs> so that next Fantastic. turn, they have trouble hitting me. <laughs> That's brilliant, honestly. Thank you. Danny. Yes, all right, let's do this. So Danny is going to like throw a leg up out of the trap door as she's jumping out, fasten her coat, throw the goggles down, we're in combat mode. I'm gonna sprint across the deck uh, between Kiana and the skeleton dude who has landed, kind of do like a little okay. slide. I, he'll get an opportunity attack on me because I'm going to pass through his range, but that's okay. Let me go ahead and roll for that. Yeah, hit. Oh, that's Fire Enoch. away. You don't want, to be, he's, don't want Enoch, you know, to Enoch to hit me, please. Uh, he's actually worse at hitting than these things are. 18 to hit. Uh, that will hit, but I will use my reaction to cast shield. Good. So okay. my AC becomes so it 20, so it does not. Uh, so Danny, like, Baseball slides past the guy, throws an arm up, the spectral gear of shield comes down, blocks that, and then pops up at the edge of the ship, and I'm gonna cross my hands in front of me, um, very like uh, anime volume one cover style, and reach to the blaze to cast burning hands, so a 15 foot cone of fire uh, goes out to try and hit those two skeleton guys who are plummeting towards us. Hell yes, that's a dex save from both of them. Yes, dex 12. But they are falling, so maybe they're not so That's, good at that. Uh, no, no, they have shields to like hide behind. Oh, uh, they rolled gotcha. real good. And they both damage. do succeed. Bye. Okay. They rolled. They rolled really good on their saves. They but. still take half damage. Uh, so that's that's fifteen points. So have to whatever that is halved of uh, fire seven. damage. Fifteen down to seven. Yes, yeah, so they will take seven points of fire damage. Uh, and then for my bonus action, because my cannon is up, I'm gonna have. That bad boy on its little chicken feet goes skirt, 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 over 15 feet. Trying to get, uh, only 10 feet actually, and then try and get line of sight on this green guy. Yeah. Yep. I'm gonna hit Greeny. I'm gonna take an attack at him with the Force Ballista. Okay, so that's going to be a 17 to hit. That will just hit. All right, so he's <laughs> going to take 2d8 plus three points of force damage. This is gonna be not amazing. Nine points of force damage and he gets knocked back. 10 feet, I cool. think. Cool. He's falling towards the ship, so... 
boing. I'm just trying to push him far enough away that he doesn't. He's still gonna hit the ship, but no. You know what? Uh, when it's his turn, he'll have to do something. But we'll, we'll get there. At the end of my turn, um, Plug gets to go. <laughs> I forgot about him for so long. Yes. Plug <laughs> will let me pull up the uh, stats for the homunculus. <laughs> Please tell me he can cast fireball. Well, he has a ranged weapon attack. Uh, I think he could, yes. it could also use him to cast spells, but I'm officially out of spell slots, so he's not going to do that. Um, oh, bud. Yeah, he's also in a glass dome right now. Yeah, he's going to skirt, skirt, skirt on to the like, edge of the ship, uh, the edge of that dome that he's in, and sort of like poke through the bottom. Is there a little, like, a little like cat door <laughs> in the dome? No, it's over. It's uh, He can come out over there. Okay. Uh, yeah, plug will come out over there, kind of stand at the top of the steps, and if I stand here, does he have line of sight on uh, the guy beyond Finbar, or would he have cover? Yep. Awesome. No, he's totally, uh, he's, if the cat, um, plug is up. Uh, Finbar's tall, but he's not that tall. Mm. Awesome. Uh, hmm, do I want plug to attack him, or do I want plug to attack one of the falling guys? I really want to know what his ranged attack is, <laughs> what the flavor is. The ones marked green and red are both doing bad. Uh, I'll fire at the yeah, I can't wait to learn what a cat range attack <laughs> is, too. I was surprised Just a, to see one that. Hairball. Laser, laser eyes. <laughs> laser eyes. <laughs> oh, I hope it's laser eyes. Uh, plug actually has to step Bad five feet down the steps in order to be in range of this spell attack, uh, ranged weapon attack. Yeah, so he might, if he's got a short range, he's got to do red. Yeah, he's going to fire at red. Uh, he's got a 30 foot range. So plug, like, skirt, skirt, skirts down the steps, uh, and you just watch his, like, <laughs> much like a cat about to, like, fire off at fire out a hairball he like completely tenses up and his body like accordions in but then <laughs> his tail like curls up behind him and it's little like sockets and like a little bit of electricity crackles in the back and then all of a sudden plug just like fully expands and the tail just like fires off two little darts where the plugs were coming from from the socket and fire off at the red guy as one sort of projectile Aww. Okay, go ahead. And he makes the um like Rolls. Windows 94 startup sound while this happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's not a stealth attack. <laughs> oh, plug got a dirty <laughs> twenty. <laughs> what? Yeah. Tattle, plug is gonna hit. Oh my god. MVP. Job, MVP. Plug did max Good damage. Job, That's six points of force damage for plug. <laughs> That's my That's boy. That's max damage. Yeah. That is exactly what you need to kill this <laughs> yes! Yeah, yeah oh. plug! Oh, oh how man, embarrassing. I, I can't believe I forgot um, I had a whole other way uh, to attack on. Uh, Danny, <clears throat> Danny, how many hit points does, uh, does Just plug, plug have? Oh, don't. no! Plug, how uh, plug uh, has don't, 10 don't hit that. points. Uh-oh. Uh, so plug gains oh. five temporary hit points. <laughs> <laughs> as... Uh, the the world of of Acheron, the, the plane of Acheron, uh, right. infuses him with bloodlust to continue the fight. Oh uh, no! He to take the half of his maximum. You see, um, uh, wire hairs stand on edge, uh, and he tenses uh, like a predator ready to kill. Oh god! <laughs> I love this cat. I can't believe he got the kill. It's what he deserves. So that's frankly, little, his little glowing red eyes yeah, just plugs. Like glowing yeah, his eyes just. Redder. Burn yeah, red. Yeah, yeah. Oh no. Let's out his oh, battle um, cry one more yeah. time. Do do do. Makes dialogue uh, noises. Yep. It is yeah. Enoch's turn. He's near the bow. He's gonna run over uh, and join Kiana, jump over the railing of the deck and land, join Kiana. He's gonna use his action to dodge uh, and yeah. take a cue from you. Uh, face back to back uh, from these guys who are about Ooh. to fall. Um, oh, this rules. So here's what's up. The green was hit with the ballista. So blue falls normally, yellow falls normally. Green is going to make a deck save to see if they can catch onto the boat and climb up. Uh, your DC is 12, Danny? Force ballista is just an attack roll. Spell, spell attack. Uh, what's your spell save spell DC? Spell save DC, yes. What's your spell save DC? Spell save DC is 15. 15. There you go. He's going to make a DC 15 dexterity. Please fail. Uh, Please. Natural 18. No. Uh, so he, it's okay. he lands on the he lands on the edge and then scrambles up. That's uh, okay. We've so still got plug. <laughs> We've still got the MVP. Cool. <laughs> so they make two spear attacks. There's going to be two on a uh, disadvantage on uh, Kiana first. Come at me, bro. Uh, that's a 14 to hit. No. And uh, even worse. <laughs> crit that was negated. Good. Two on... Uh, Enoch, uh, natural one, and then uh, a 
also bad. Yeah. Not, it's fine. Now we've got two coming on. Uh, I still Just have my out. shield up until the start of my next turn. So my AC is... Uh, it, oh, no, no, does it go down if I it, cast it on my turn? Uh, wait, no. Uh, no, it lasts until the start of your next turn, so you have no reaction. Shield is still on. Yes, so my AC is 20 uh, for And I rolled terrible. Great. <laughs> Six, 16 to hit. That would have, uh, but no. Not high enough. Uh, cool, yeah. <laughs> These guys uh, all land and are not prepared for the combination of an arcane board and two monks who have specifically prepared <laughs> uh, to deal with them. Yes. Uh, Virla, it is your turn. Um, unfortunately, I think he, unless you want to uh, start to slow down, you're going to use your keep using your action to No, crash. yeah, I, I will focus. Thankfully, since Plug left my uh, <laughs> allergy, I can now <laughs> dedicate a little more focus to In this, to, to in this situation, is Virla... Um, Luke asking how R2 is doing back there, or is he R2 screaming in the back of the... A <laughs> uh, little column A, little column yeah, B. Yeah. How are you doing back there, Virla? How you doing back there, buddy? That's how Virla's oh. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. Uh, Virla will use his action to, to dash and just keep... Keep this, uh, keep this hype train moving. Hell yeah! <laughs> hype train is totally going. Finn, you're up. Oh okay, God. um, I'm gonna drop the bow, pull out my moon sickle, Waylon, and I'm gonna stride up to these, uh, these guys on the deck. So I we got. Heard. I thought it was a popsicle. In the shape. Let's do. That's what I heard too. <laughs> moon sickle. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I have to redraw something now. Anyways, um, uh, yeah. So uh, one attack at advantage uh, with the sickle. Uh, da, da, da. That's a nat twenty. Yes. Nice. Oh, nice. And a nat one. Uh, I'll take the nat twenty. Uh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you will, will you? Uh, I would dramatic. like to, if that's all right. Um, <laughs> dramatic. Yeah. All right, remember, it's Rolling. it's the roll of the dice plus the maximum. Yep. Uh, that's minimum plus maximum is 10. Okay. Um, is there anything else you get to do from the fairies? Yes. Make a strength save. Uh, yeah. 12. 12? Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, the second I strike this dude sort of like in the right in the neck with the, the sickle, the fairies uh, run along my arm and punch him uh, 15 feet off the deck of the ship. Yes! Woo! Woo! Uh, Woo! You see the fairies come and grab him by this fancy armor and uh, chuck him off. Yeet! Uh, yeah, he's just going to fall and splat. He only had nine hit points left. Oh, um, amazing. Uh, Finbar, you gain... I keep deleting the one who has the initiative. Uh, it's fine. They're probably going to be dead <laughs> before they go again. Uh, Finbar, what's your hit point maximum? Uh, 63. <laughs> you gain 31 temporary hit points. What? Uh, as you smoke this <laughs> this fucker. Uh, I cannot uh, die now. You hear you hear uh, <laughs> Bring on uh, the dragon. a horrid a horrid <laughs> echo uh, like sort of wail come from within this uh, di like distant and far away come from within the chest of this thing as it just whoosh, off the edge of the boat uh, and then you immediately how does Finbar feel getting hyped up? Like this is this is the bloodlust of Acheron uh, uh -oh. fueling him <laughs> on. How does that make him feel? Um, I kind of feel like I'm back home hunting down like oh. my next dinner. Ooh. Um, so you're Ooh. you're acting the, you're activating the hunter side of Finbar, not the druid or chef part right now. That and I like still have to look looking at it. Uh, so I will get right in between these two. Sweet. Right. Um, yeah. yeah, you, yeah. Deep down, you reach into that, that part of you that's, that's hunter, not, not chef. And yeah, you're ready. All right, Kiana. Okay. Uh, you just saw Finbar come up and slice, and then this skeleton you were facing down that you had parried just goes flying away. What would you like to do? Uh, all right. Two skeletons left. Uh, Enox got one. I'll take the other. So I will also scooch up a little bit just to pop that guy. Uh, and let's, uh, yeah, let's just punch him. Hopefully. Oh, okay. Uh, dirty 19. Uh, so. That'll hit. Yep. All right. So that's d6 plus four force damage. Nine points of force damage. <sighs> this guy's, oh, last, last leg. 
Well, second attack. Uh, 24. Mm-hmm. And d6 yeah. plus 4. You Fourth smoke damage. him. All right, good, because it was minimum points. damage, five points. <laughs> boom, boom. Uh, yeah, the two fists, one goes through your crunch of desiccated body, and then another fist takes the head fully off. Uh, what's your hit point maximum? 34. You gain 17 temporary hit points. Interesting. Mm. And uh, how does how does Kiana feel uh, being infected with the, the bloodlust of this plane? Um, I think it hits in that same weird, familiar but alien nostalgia that I was just dealing with earlier. Uh, there's something there that really likes being here. Uh. Yeah, there's, you, you sense now, now that you know what you're looking for, it's a little bit easier to sense. You don't have to be meditating. Uh, you feel, yeah, there's... There's a there's a warrior spirit in there. Huh. Excited. Okay, well I'm gonna I'm gonna temper that and take the dodge action again for my my bonus. Uh just in case someone cool. wants to hit something. Uh Danny, you're Don't up. worry, plug will handle this. <laughs> <laughs> uh Danny's going to uh like green trench dramatically bellowing in the wind, goggles on, run up to the upper level of the ship and uh, take aim at the last guy down there through my baronium fluctuator and cast a spicy, spicy firebolt at him. You know, it's right it. behind him. Is that going to be a problem? This just does fire damage to no, the target. It's not it, it does not. It's not area of effect. Okay. It just also does not have any force effects. Uh, okay, that's not bad. Uh, 22 to hit. Yeah. That's going to be 2d10. Maybe I need you guys to damage. Good. Nah. No. Oh yeah, easy peasy. We're just in Acheron with Geek Yankee dragon. and a red I'm, dragon I'm, on our tail. Uh, <laughs> right, I'll bring them. I'm ready. <laughs> That's gonna be yeah, nine yeah. points of fire damage from Danny's little bolt. Okay. And then as Danny runs up, the chicken-legged Eldritch Cannon goes <laughs> and across the deck to get in line, five, 10, 15, with our baddie. And I'm gonna fire off with the Force Ballista for my bonus action. Okay, uh, 19 to hit. That'll hit. Nice, that's gonna be 2d8 plus three. Oh, I forgot to add uh, for the Baronium Fluctuator thing too, because I that was fired through my- Go for it. Uh, arcade Firearm. So the Arcade Firearm damage adds a d8, so I'm gonna roll that first. So that was an additional one points of uh, fire damage. Ah, and yeah. Fun. Wear them down, baby. Yes. <laughs> it's a battle of a thousand cuts. And then uh, the Force Ballista did uh, 12 points of force damage. And that bad guy gets pushed five feet away from the cannon, which I think takes him out cool. of range. slams into the railing of these stairs. Uh, it, Enoch does have a turn before them, so if your turn ends, well, uh, hold this up, guy goes because we away. do have one last guy. Oh. Who's <laughs> MVP! Oh my god. MVP! Let me oh see how far god. Plug can Danny has a million bag of tricks. Yeah, Danny <laughs> is nothing if not constantly surrounded by small little devices. You don't have to use your bonus. You don't have to use your bonus action to command the homunculus. No, he just he just moves after my he moves on my initiative. That can't be right. <laughs> in combat, the homunculus shares your initiative count but takes its turn immediately after yours. It can only move and use its reaction on its own. <laughs> Oh, I do have to use my bonus action to command the homunculus. I'm sorry, that was incorrect. Plug will just no uh, take the... <laughs> take the t- yeah, uh, Plug can move forward if you Yeah, like. he can move uh, on his own, on and his he own. can take the dodge action automatically, but he can't uh, do anything. But he is currently, but he is currently sated currently with bloodlust, sated so with perhaps Plug <laughs> wants to kill. <laughs> oh, he moves 30 feet forward. <laughs> Oh my god. Must Plug be commanded to fulfill the Plug instincts of nature? Plug will take the dodge action and sort of just like accordion... <laughs> Back arched tail up approach the, the combat zone. <laughs> Fantastic. But, All right. A weird uh, out, but <laughs> Enoch will make two attacks. Uh, he only has a plus four to hit, so we'll see if he even hits at all. Nope. No, Enoch. <laughs> he does really. He does a bunch of damage too because he's got a special thing, but he just he has a really bad hit. But um, he's so wise. <laughs> He comes through um, and goes for two punches, but he does not have the benefit of huge astral force arms, uh, and this tower shield just imposes itself. Bam, bam. Finally, this guy's going to get to attack. He'll just do one attack on Enoch, one attack on Finbar. Enoch is going to miss Finbar. It's a 17 to hit. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Yeah, this guy is, this guy is, uh, he was just fighting hobgoblins. He was not prepared to take on do we look like uh, hobgoblins? Yeah. <laughs> to take on a full uh, adventuring party. Thirla, 
Uh, you continue to steer, I assume? Mm-hmm. Yep. And Finbar. Fuck him up. We're back to, up to you at the top of the initiative. This guy pinned against the, uh, even though Enoch didn't hurt him, he's like fully pinned him now with these this flurry of blows against the uh, the railing of the deck. Hit All right, you circle up on the stairs to get flanking. Now standing like one foot on the railing, fully above this guy. Like this guy's like head is underneath your foot, your boot, basically. Uh, so I, I line up my sickle. Okay, let's, I got one <laughs> shot at this. Um, and uh, I'm going to hit him. Do it. If you hit him, he dies. Do it. Uh, it's a Ooh. natural 18. And a yes. battle hit. An 8. I'll take the 18. A uh, total of 26. It's a d4 to hit. Okay. Uh, that's a total of 7 points of slashing damage. That does it. Boom. That thing comes down. Unfortunately, you can't gain more temporary hit points, but the bloodlust blows up in you, and you see Lalan the blade sink all the way through this thing's head, cleaving through the armor. It goes limp. Uh, the shield falls to the side, and it slumps off of your blade. Good work, team. <laughs> all right. Okay, half the yep, corpse you make guys a are... strength saving throw. <laughs> <laughs> it goes flying. <laughs> <laughs> Merrily it makes Fantastic. a nice parabola off the end. You see, yeah, you see the fairies uh, just take the trash out. <laughs> are the fairies cool. getting filled with are... bloodlust too? Like, what does that look like? <laughs> oh yeah, they're riled up, man. Uh, you can hear them chanting, <laughs> make a little football hooligan noise. Like, little like, yeah, yeah exactly. Pikmin esque fairy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they really are the Pikmin. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Um, Whoo, boy. Hells yeah, okay. Uh, sorry, we're, uh, that ends this combat. The final skeletons fall away, and you are able to turn your attention back to the matter at hand. The Gith Yankee still attempting to close in behind you. I think that's a good place to go to break. Rolling with difficulty. Hi, I'm Wally, aka Finbar, and you're listening to Rolling with Difficulty. Now, uh, let's get back to the show. Rolling with difficulty. And we're back. Virla is still at the helm. Uh, the rest of you, your actions are your own. What would you like to do? So the cube is ah. like closing in on us actively right now? Yep. Are we going to make it? Are we, yeah, I, I guess that's the good I hope so. <laughs> uh, so far, so good. Great. You haven't been crushed yet. Awesome, awesome. Uh, no, it's not closing in. You're, you know, you're in a tunnel. You're oh, in a tunnel okay. inside of it. Oh, you're not. Okay. You're not in the trench run. Uh, I mean, you're in a trench run, but it's not. It's not the. It's although that could have cut off the gif if you made it. That would have been hard to check though. Uh, oh, but yeah. yeah, it's a maneuvering check right now to get through. Mm. Um, and well, so far, it's... you're doing it a lot better than they are because you have a success. In, that's how oh, it works. I was trying to think so. if there's any way we could throw stuff behind us to make following us more difficult for them. You know. Like, I'm I mean, we through. should be able to, but we do have. You have a motorcycle, soul coins. And yeah. we do. You have no. seven grades of soul coins. No, no, we're, we're, not, we're not doing we're that. We're not just gonna throw mm. hundreds of souls overboard. Yeah. Moore no. thinks that we could rectify uh, the problem of tormented souls by giving them purpose, <laughs> in whatever in whatever way that manifests. <laughs> Danny's alignment is chaotic neutral. As far as I'm concerned, we could throw them overboard, and it would be to great benefit to us. <laughs> It wouldn't uh, do any good. We don't even know if the if the gift couldn't catch them, then there's no reason for them to go after them. Yeah, the, the hard break, no, try, from them try and are. break open a soul, soul coin to see. No, if it don't. Just, like, no, uh, no, no, no. You're busy steering. <laughs> I am. I am. <laughs> no touchy. But they're okay. big, by the way. The soul coins are like. I was going to describe them as the size of a cookie. That doesn't mean anything. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> a decent sized they, cookie. They're larger than a cookie, but smaller than a very large cookie. Um, yeah. Okay. They're, they're like hockey puck size. They're big. They're not like oh, like a they're not like okay. a quarter. They're like hockey puck size. So the crates that are full of them, it's not like um like they're stacked. It's not just like loose coins in there. It's like opening a, a pirate's treasure chest, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, okay. Virla, Virla's steering the still ship a lot of them. Uh, to wherever you guys need to. I'm trying to just get away. I, I'm, I'm trying to get away yeah. from, from mm -hmm. the kid. Mm -hmm. Just Good idea. in whatever way that uh, You know what? To get us back into, you've been dashing for so long with this. Um, this is true. Why don't we have, a, why don't we have uh, the first skill as we come back? Let's do a constitution oh, check no. to see if you can keep this up. Come uh, on, not too left. hard. Let's call it a DC, a DC 13. Okie dokie. Not, not too difficult, but still a little straining to keep... Uh, 
keep this going. Uh, on a fail, what happens? I gain a point of exhaustion, but nothing necessarily. Nope. Uh, I, could, I could still dash if I wish, right? Uh, you're gonna you're dashing, but it's like it's mechanically what happens is you accumulate a fail, and so they're gonna okay. like. Okay. Uh, narratively, that means they're catching up to you as you dash slower. You can still keep using your action to dash, but you're tired now, and it's uh, yeah, it's not a perfect okay. amalgamation of uh, rules and war, but yeah. Right, right, right. Okay, I'm rolling. Oh, damn it. It was on a 17, and then it rolled back to a 7 oh, plus no. 2. That's only going to no. be a 9. Uh, uh, boo-hoo, you guys have succeeded five <laughs> times, and you got one failure. Uh, this does bring you in range of the harpoons, though. You see, okay. like, it's, it's the mental strain of you concentrating, essentially, on this, like, uh, this is like concentrating on a spell and dashing while you do it is starting to get on you. The ship does not crash. You keep your, it's a combination too of the focus of keeping the masts from being snapped off on anything. You're just not as able to keep it going as fast. They are going to make two harpoon attacks to see if they can anchor you guys in. So come at me, have, come at me. <laughs> I want to. Uh, uh, yeah, you want to go for it? All right. I want to go for it. To, so here's what's going to happen. They're going to roll. They got two. They're going to try to hit. Uh, it's an AC 15 on the wood, just like last time. They get a plus five, so 50% chance of getting hit. We'll call a success if you're able to prevent one from getting in. So in other words, if I hit on either of them, then you're going to use your reaction to try and reduce the damage to zero. If you reduce it to zero, it doesn't stick into the deck, uh, okay. and that's a success. All right, here we go. Two rolls to begin with, and a one and a four uh, isn't even hard enough, so Aww. you guys are way out of range. <sighs> Next Sorry, time, it was, baby. It would have been very cool. But, uh, I love the mental image of Keanu um, just like at the ready, watching as each harpoon goes. <laughs> I've never been so sad because you definitely would have reduced the damage. For that. It sucks. Yeah. Well, next but, yeah, time. But yeah, the two spears, uh, harpoons go. They're good. It's gonna take them a little while to reset those if they can at all. I'm trying to think if, if uh, there's some way we closer. can like. Is there some way we can like convince the all the skeletons and hobgoblins that like there's free candy <laughs> yeah, in that even, dragonfly? <laughs> even without convincing, just sort of like doing a I don't know what check this would be, looking at the cubes on either side of us and looking if there's something that like a well placed firebolt or perhaps like force ballista shot could knock and sort of just knock something either like a wave of skeletons or like a piece of shrapnel Ooh, or debris to like kind of block yeah, the path yeah, yeah. in between the Ooh. two of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um hmm. It's like, it's like a luck check. I don't even know. <laughs> um, see, I would say that's investigation to find insight, the kind of thing Insight? Perhaps an blow. insight check? Blow. Insight? All right, all right. In insight check? You know what? Okay. okay. You know what? Okay, here's my, uh -huh, here's my, uh -huh. here's my rationalization. Ready? Uh, okay. Uh -huh. You want to try and knock guys off so that as the ship, like, they get knocked off so that as the ship is coming, these guys all hit the ship and hopefully attack the Githyanki, right? You are using an insight check to try and figure out their pattern so that you can direct Viola to try and like bump some of them off with the ship. Hmm. Okay, which of us is rolling that? Uh, I assume you want to roll your insight check, right? Yes, uh, I do. Yeah, it yeah. is my high better cool. than mine. And yeah. I've already well, made seven. Okay. Um, so I can't. Before, before you roll, let me come up with a DC. This is also pretty hard, but uh, <laughs> definitely doable. Let's go ahead and set this at 20. Okay, uh, my insight is plus seven. So, so you need a 13, a 13 or, or higher. higher. Come yeah. on, Keanu. Um, I'll try. I don't know. <laughs> ah! Four. Oh, four. Uh, you, okay, you direct. Do you see, uh, yeah, there's an army of these skeletons coming, uh, and they're cresting over what looks like, like a piece of metal that's kind of loose on the outside of this cube. You're inside the cube, but on the surface of this tunnel. And you direct for the mast to come along and knock it off. You successfully do that, but the mast, as Virla turns the ship, is just a little too... I should say your insight isn't quite high enough. Uh, you thought that this metal plate was looser than it was, and as oh, the metal no. plate comes loose, so does piece in the mast. It goes... <laughs> flying ah, yeah. back, clang, 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 out through the uh, thing. Uh, the ship loses a little bit of speed. Uh, that's two failures. No! Uh, no! You're still keeping ahead of the, the dragon, but the, the ship is faster than the dragon is, so... Gith Yankee are starting to draw closer. So here's what's up. Uh, they're not gonna all like try and jump because it's a it's a risk. But two of them are gonna make athletics checks to try and get onto your ship. Oh man, we were doing. They're so not proficient good in, the in this actually, half. but they just need to hit a ten on each of these. Uh, but it's only two. The two who are on the front are gonna forsake the. Uh, they're close enough now. They're gonna forsake the uh, the spears and they're gonna try to jump on. Uh, and if they Dang succeed, it, then it's gonna be combat. So here we go. Yes, both of them succeed. Boom. Okay. Oh, okay. 
Oh, oh. Yeah, guys, move yourself wherever you want to be because you see these All two right. Gif Yankee come and jump right onto the back here. Uh, let me get their uh, hit points and AC up. These guys are a little tougher than skeletons. Nah, we can take them. All right, yeah, go ahead and roll your initiative. I'm going to bring uh, I remember Enoch anything about this. in the back as well. Okay, here we go. Stop <laughs> rock. This might not be. Oh, gross. Okay, well, at least I got that one out. Hey, no. None of them are knights, they're just warriors. So. <laughs> no, oh, okay. Virla. Please protect Virla at all costs. This die's going in the timeout corner. Okay, first we'll do Enox. Uh, Enox rolls a natural 20. Hey! hey. hey. That's uh, me. Okay. Uh, definitely has higher Red is sitting than at a... uh, Danny. Uh, yeah, you see as the ship starts to get closer, the dragon is has to follow directly behind. The dragon's uh, not that big, but it has to follow directly behind this dragonfly-looking ship because uh, it's just so narrow in here. And you see two of them t- step back, just run forward and spring with inhuman strength, crest over the, the railing on the bow of the boat and land, uh, one on either side of Kiana. Fearla, you've turned your head over and see just two k- Gith Yankee land with cat-like grace on the back of this deck. It's only need for one cat on this ship. <laughs> <laughs> Enoch is up. Yeah, these guys speak Gith. Which uh, does anyone here speak Agreed. Gith other than? Uh, <laughs> no, you know what? They would know. They would know common too because they're always they're always raiding people, and it doesn't really make sense to threaten people in a language they don't speak. So these guys, mm. I'm gonna I'm gonna veto the monster. Funny if they do it on purpose. Would also know common. True. You see two of them land, and one of them uh, they both pull out these gnarly looking silver great swords inlaid with rubies. One of them, the, the one closest to you, Kiana, looks at you and says, "Surrender, or die." Please choose dog. Sorry, they're Australian? <laughs> they're Australian? <laughs> <laughs> I thought drow were the ones that came from a land down under. But I'm so I really <laughs> wanted to do drow as Australian. I was like, I don't know if you guys are all ever meet a drow, and I like doing the Australian voice, so these guys, <laughs> this cruise. Does that mean Australian. that whenever I'm speaking Gith, I have to do an Australian yes. accent? <laughs> That's exactly what that means. That's why you're Crikey. bad, because you have Crikey. such a... That's why you get so bad. Well, I get from Gith It's important to remember the, the pin pin major. If you're gonna do it, all right? I can't do it. Um, I'm, Australian. I can I'm not even gonna try it. It's all not about the pin pen. I, I have a, I have, I have a question. Since he talked to me, yes. can I just, can I just smile and see if I can intimidate him with my spooky face? Uh, <laughs> yeah, go for it. I would love to see how that works. Just a second. I don't have any natural intimidation, I believe. Uh, yeah, check yeah, your stats. No, plus one. Woo. But my, uh, uh, where is it? Um. Yeah, your advantage on intimidation checks. I have advantage okay, on intimidation yeah. checks. Oh. Okay, yeah. Two dice at a plus one. Let's see what happens. Come on, Kiana. Ah! Well, one of them is a natural one, and one of them fell in my drawer where I have my preamp. One more time. <laughs> okay, yeah, you're uh, 15. 15. 15. 15? You give this uh, smile. You see, like, a weird kind of jagged opening comes uh, in the the golden face mask. Uh, it says, Ooh, you're spooky. I'm gonna lie for you. <laughs> uh, Thank you. Yeah, they're like pirates. <laughs> they're not they're gonna be upset. Initiative begins. Enoch comes around uh, and flanks the one who was talking to you, Kiana, uh, turns over his shoulder uh, and says, Hey, brother. What brings you all the way out here? Um, Enoch turns and says, This doesn't like need to be a fight. The Whatever you're looking for, <laughs> I promise we can work something out. He goes, Yeah, how about your spine? Let's see if you got one of those in you. Um, uh. And uh, then Enoch's gonna. <laughs> Good lord. Uh, Enoch's I gonna make two attacks. So uh, <laughs> Enoch does not hit, comes in with two punches, uh, but this guy is wearing uh, like silvered half plate with that same like ruby inlay, and he just, he two lands, uh, two punches land, and just he doesn't feel anything. Uh, he gives a laugh, he goes, Yeah, more or less what I expected. Let's dance. But uh, flanking, does he get advantage or something? Oh, uh-huh. you're right, you're right. Yes. <laughs> yes. Tattle it. The second punch. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, he says that, and then the second punch, as he's halfway through, the second punch finds the space yeah. between the sword and uppercuts right on the chin. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, about what yeah, this does a good amount. One d8 plus uh, six is fourteen. Yeah, he takes uh, fourteen points of damage, uh, both uh, bludgeoning and psychic. As the punch, and as the punch lands, you see a shock of uh, like purplish energy come off of it. Um, he staggers back, grabs his jaw, shakes it a little bit, goes, never mind. It's gonna be more fun than I thought. Hey. Danny, you're up. 
There's uh, a big yeah. thing in the way, so I don't know what you're planning to do. <laughs> you're all the way on the bow of the ship, and the dome that closes the helm is currently protecting these guys from being shot by you. Hmm, the dome, the dome, the dome. Uh, looking over the edge of the ship, is there room below us? Like, how much open space do we have to maneuver up and down? Like, 15 feet on each side, maybe? Not side to side, like, straight up and straight down. Yeah, yeah, straight up and straight down, it's a tunnel, so it's more or less the same, like, 15 feet. Gotcha, gotcha. So we couldn't, like, drop down, slow down, and try and let them, like, zoom right on past us to get behind them, could we? I mean, definitely not no, it'd just be pretty <laughs> difficult. Okay, I'm gonna put a pin in that for now, then. Oh, well, I do not... Um, I should have practiced my gith more. I told he not to teach me curse <laughs> words, and I didn't want to do it. Uh, all right. <laughs> well, I guess I just have to try and get closer, because Danny was over the other side of the ship doing other nonsense. You know how it'd be when you're distracted. Technically, these guys are within range, but they're protected by a giant dome. So first things first, I'm going to use a bunch of my movement to get a get a run in. Um, Plug is nearby, though, right? Actually, point of order. How <laughs> Plug is on the other side of the... Danny, her cannon, and Plug are all just on the opposite side of the ship right now. But point of order, <laughs> yeah, how she... much cover do they have from the dome? Is it full, partial? Uh, one of them has total cover. One of them has three quarters cover. Okay. I am a from, spell from where you're sniper, standing. which means that yeah, my so you ignore three quarters spell cover. attack ignores the you, You're going to have... Yeah, you're going to have to come all the way to the port side. Uh-huh. all the way to the port side to get the three to get any line of sight so it's three quarters cover but yeah you can shoot a guy on the left okay okay I should give him colors so that um so and I colors. don't think that that technically extends yeah, to the player. force ballista but it could no that's, that's not a spell so that would be firing it with can like shoot at him. disadvantage it's just it's just got no it has a he has a plus five to his AC ah gotcha okay well Nothing to do except work with what we got. <laughs> so first, Danny is going to run up 5, 10, 15, 20, and just kind of stand at the top of the steps in the opposite end, and with my goggles down, sort of going into, like, sniper vision, going to whip out the multi-tool once more and square up to fire off a firebolt at the guy who has three-quarters cover. Cool, but you ignore it for the firebolt, so go ahead and roll. Oh, nice, 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 nice. Uh, that's going to be a 21 to hit. Ooh, yep, nice. that'll hit. Nice, that's going to be 2d10 plus the uh, d6 for, of extra damage from my <laughs> arcane firearm. <laughs> Let's do this shit. Where is the arcane firearm? Yeah. Oh, it's a d8 from the arcane firearm, not a d6. Hold. Oh. Let me pull out a bigger die. <clears throat> nice. Uh, that's going to be 14 points of uh, fire damage. Hot damn. Oh, wait, what was the total to hit? Uh, 20, 21. 21, yeah. Uh, he will cast shield mm. as a reaction. Boo. How dare you use my arm? Oh, wait, let me double check. I'm pretty sure he has that. Uh, no, he doesn't have shield. Oh. Uh, Enoch has that, not him. So, uh, he will have it, bitch. Uh, That's he my has, boy. He has something else cast on him, but. Uh, and as I'm, as I'm reaching out to cast the firebolt, Danny is going to yell in Gith, and audience, please bear with me, because I'm about to attempt to do Danny's voice and an Australian accent simultaneously, oh, and I don't think this is going to go well. Here it comes. <laughs> so, so. No pressure. No, no, no. Get ready. You, got this. you should just prep yourself. Uh, so you know when you're learning a language and you don't get to learn any curse words from textbooks, so you just have to make up something that sounds kind of like it could possibly be an insult from very like innocent uh-huh. sounding terms. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> I learned Gith from obviously Gith for dummies, so similar situation. Uh, so Danny just yells in Gith. <laughs> oh, I can't do this. Oh my god, Lassie, why did you make this? You can do it, you can do it. It's a judgment free zone. <laughs> Crikey! <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> keep, it, keep it rolling, keep it rolling. Sorry. <clears throat> yes, and that shit. Yep, 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 yep. You're a, you're a fres- freshly roasted. Uh-huh. Bonga meat? I don't know. What's a gith dish? <laughs> <laughs> that was a very valiant uh, It's really intimidating! Make uh, an intimidation down, check. <laughs> Make I, an intimidation check. I am not a professional voice actor. Oh, a natural 20! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> you butchered yes. their language so horribly that they were so scared and frightened. He goes, just incredibly goes. offended. Yeah, so that's what you think you said. Um, and instead he points a great sword at you and says, 
you bring my fucking mother to this hell out of your head. <laughs> uh, and as soon, after doing that, the um, uh, Eldritch Cannon will sort of chicken like up uh, in front of Danny and it's gonna fire off. He'll have three quarters cover, so he'll get the additional AC, but it's gonna fire at him. Okay, not not terrible, not terrible. We'll see. Not terrible? Not terrible, I'm not gonna, you know what? Nope, no, 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 I can't, I can't break the voice. The, this is, the pushing the limits of my ability to change my, the way my <laughs> voice sounds today. Uh, that's gonna be a 24 to hit. Yeah, it's still gonna hit even with three quarters cover. He's just oh. so intimidated by my flawless Australian. <laughs> He's like doing the full like, are you not entertained pose? Like, oh, are you, you not entertained? <laughs> you not <know>, entertained? <laughs> no. uh, that is 11 points of force damage, and he is pushed five feet away from the cannon, which I'm hoping is over the edge over of the, the ship. Edge? Oh, Although still... I think there's a railing yeah, there. Yeah, he's not gonna make sure. a deck save to try and hold on though. In the, there, oh, Please you know, fail. there is a railing. You're right, actually. There's a railing. He might still fall over the top. It's a valiant effort. Maybe if he, maybe if he uh, rolls really badly. I'm gonna roll a. I'm gonna roll, roll a d20. If he rolls a one, I'll go over the edge. I'm gonna roll it for everyone. Disadvantage right, because go. he's so intimidated by God Danny's flawless. Aww. <laughs> no. 17. Uh, and I'll, All right. Plug will just start moving towards the front of the ship on his turn, but that's that's it for that's it for Danny. All right. <laughs> Kiana. <clears throat> All right. Well, this guy is flanked, so I am going to punch him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> One of these rounds, I'll do something that isn't punching, and you'll all be shocked. Okay, here we go. With advantage, because of that tasty blank. And it's two 14s, which is a 21 to hit. Uh, yeah, that'll hit. Good. Uh, all right. <laughs> D6 plus four. All right, uh, seven points of force damage on the first hit. Second attack, as per the use. Okay, uh, that's a 25 to hit. The other one was a two. Okay. Uh, okay. D6 plus four. 10 points of force damage. Uh, and I think I will use a key point to flurry of blows and attack again, because I cannot pass off this flanking bonus. All right, third attack. Oh, disgusting. Uh, well, that's a 14 to hit, and one of those was a natural one. Uh, second attack. All right, that's better. Uh, that's a 26 to hit. 19 and a 17. Uh, six points of force damage that time. Uh, yeah, yeah, he does not like that. Force fists find their way through his defenses. He's got, like... Uh, a pauldron, but one side of his chest is exposed, uh, like not armored. And yeah, you, uh, with your exceptional reach, are able to go right around this huge long sword, that great sword that he's using to like kind of keep uh, people at bay and find your mark. That that fashionable asymmetry will get you. Uh, okay, so that that was my action, my bonus action, and I'm good where I am. So that's my turn. Cool. You, you see, this one goes to jump and <laughs> try and clear the ship, and the other Gith, uh, Gith Yankee turns to him and says. Oi, deal with this one first, and you'll get her. Oh, no. <laughs> and, yeah, they're going to run in. He turns back to the, uh, Enoch and says, you're going to have to wait just a minute until we deal with this one. Uh, oh, and I should have taken unload. a dodge action. They are going to unload Kiana. four attacks. Four uh, attacks. Uh, advantage. Okay. Uh, okay, that's advantage. a 14 on the first one. Yeah, they're flanking. Fail. Oh, right, yeah. Oh, oh taste my own uh, medicine. Dirty 20. Dirty 20 will hit. Uh, okay, you take uh, seven, 13 slashing and 7 psychic. 7 Which you psychic. resist. Oh, so I only take uh, 3 take psychic? Three. Okay. Yes. Uh, even so, your, your mind is fortified against these defenses. Uh, you feel that other consciousness and you reel back at almost like a... Um, a violation as the psychic damage cuts through. The blade uh, slices Ugh. both skin and mind. And it feels yeah. bad. Uh, two more attacks. That is a 19 to hit. That'll hit. 11 slashing and uh, 8 psychic down to 4. Okay, 11. Okay, so that's 15. All right, not great. Uh, and then the final attack. That's a 21 to hit. Yep, okay. 
That's oh, I'm rolling so good on damage. Eleven slashing. Uh huh. And uh, nine psychic down to four. Ooh. Okay. Good. Uh. <laughs> I have five hit points left. <laughs> Whoa. You see as these Shit. two uh, expert swordsmen come in and start cleaving back and forth. Uh, you're not getting cut with each of these, but the eff- sheer effort it's taking to dodge, two great swords coming at you from both sides. You do like a full matrix bend back. Uh, one of your yeah. astral arms parries another one. You get a cut across the arm and feel the psychic. Uh, and it's just uh, taxing you physically and mentally at this point to keep a, a, a lethal blow from falling. Hmm, not my favorite. Uh, one needs to keep steering. Um, so they can't all, uh, as long as the ship is moving, they can't all board. Another is going to make a jump attempt. Oh, holy shit, I don't think that's enough. Nope, strength two. He rolled an eight. He just makes it. No. Hmm. Another one? Hey, you guys, yeah, you guys still haven't had to fight the dragon, though, so. Oh, thanks. <laughs> So excited through failures to get to actually be in range for these guys to attempt to jump on. Finbar, <laughs> you see um, they all, uh, these guys are rolling up now. Uh, another one lands. How is blue looking? Uh, blue? I don't know if I can. I not good. Feel. He's under half. Yeah, there's a big dome in the way. It's glass yeah. so you can see him, but. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to crawl down past uh, and get light of sight. So I can see all three from here. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can see them. Okay. The last one's gonna uh, have some cover, maybe like half cover. cover. Okay. Um, yeah, like half cover. Yeah. All right. Um, let's let's open up with some big damage. Red's unscathed, correct? Uh, red has no. Red got hit by uh, Danny. Yeah. Red's not doing great either. Yeah. He's more than half. Okay, cool. He, he got hit. All right, then um, I am going to, uh, he's going to reach for his star map, this little um, uh, cube with um, holes uh, in it that, you know, correspond with uh, sort of the stars in the sky. Um, yeah, it's actually it. weirdly reminiscent of the cube you're in. Huh. Huh. Um, he's going Just to rip it in radiant light. He's going to <laughs> um, fly uh, uh, all around him, and he's going to unleash uh, uh, a guiding bolt. Ooh. Oh, please, from his this is going to be so cool. Uh, All right, so go for red. Plus eight to this. Uh, 21. That'll hit. Yes. Yeah, against red, Four. right? Yes. This is 46 cool. radiant. Yeah, that's not going to be good for him. Okay, I rolled a four, a four, a five, and a six. Nice. Uh, Jesus. Total of uh, 19. 19. Oh my god. Please, he's not hes not down, but please describe what this does. Because um, that's a so, huge hit. To be as poetic or as brutal as you want. Um, It looks like a, a shooting star, essentially, that came right out of my fist. Um, and uh, writing said shooting star, uh, whereas another one of my fairies. Hey. Mm, you know what? I'll just do the regular, the extra d6 this time around. Uh, that's an additional five uh, piercing. Oh. Okay. This guy's not looking good. Yeah. Uh, a streak of light, and this guy is now glowing. You see a big, like, <laughs> radiant bullseye on uh, glowing <laughs> on all the, like, exposed skin, basically. Uh, the next attack against him is going to have advantage. Tasty. Uh, does that end your turn, Finn? Uh... Bonus action, I will uh, activate. So the second the um, uh, the guiding bolt leads my fist, um, sort of the rest of the uh, radiant energy covers my body as the image of a chalice appears on my shield. Um, and I activate my uh, starry form. Fantastic. Stern of the ship is getting very crowded. Virla, uh, <laughs> you're, you're still mid-trench run. Uh, if there's any uh, like ability check you want to try to make uh, for the uh, skill challenge, you, you could do that. Hmm. As long as you're navigating uh, here, I don't know if there, you have any. I did. Uh, any well, originally I did have this idea. Ooh. I did have this idea of basically trying to do something similar to what uh, we attempted before, uh, where uh, 
Virla would basically steer, intentionally steer the ship to kind of clip one of the cubes so that skeletons yeah, and Yeah, you can do that. You can do that. You made wanna... an attempt and it didn't didn't work, but I mean, here's the thing. Any ability check is gonna, you know, could always fail. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. But uh, you've already made a, a ship handling check, but uh, if you can justify it some other way, um, then... Uh, I will totally let you roll to try that. Well, I, I wasn't thinking that anymore because the risk of it, uh, the risk of skeletons and or hobgoblins falling on our deck and increasing and just increasing the the, the, the encounter size for our party. Uh, I'm not going to risk it. Um, for now, <sighs> barrel roll. Uh, yeah. <laughs> There's artificial um, gravity, right? Yeah. Yeah, the for ship. Now, I'm okay yeah, with stuff this, sticks to uh, shit. I'm okay with just continuing to use my action to, to dash forward and, and um, okay, yeah, and basically just keep the ship moving. Okay. All right, Enoch's turn. He will attack twice with advantage. Garbage and oh God, change my dice. Come on, man. He shouts out Kiana and uh, yeah. tries to uh, get his arms around uh, this dude, uh, this this Gith Yankee. Uh, oh. But the Gith is way stronger than him and just no. uh, throws him back. Um, against uh, against the railing, says, "Oh, I said I'd deal with you when I had a moment. Stay down." Hey, rude. <gasps> no, he's a kiss your mother with that mouth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jokes on you. I never knew my mother. Oh, that's deeply tragic. Do you want to talk about it? <laughs> Let's unpack this. <laughs> 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 Danny, you're up. Okay. <clears throat> yes. Oh my god. I did use the downtime between turns to Google Australian slang just for this. Um, so oh for no. <laughs> So first Danny's gonna Fun. use her movement to run up further to where the action is. Uh, She's got gift for dummies open, furiously <laughs> paging through. Furiously paging through like a travel Rude guide words. to the Astral Sea. <laughs> Twenty five thirty. Danny runs up. I'm, can I, uh, from where I'm standing now, kind of in the center of the deck, uh, do I have line of sight on the green guy to fire off a bolt at him? Uh, I think he was in the same space as last time as the other guy. So yeah, you definitely have line of sight. He still has cover. You still ignore cover. Great. So kind of like whipping around, uh, pull out the multi-tool once again and uh, fire off a bolt at him. Uh, as I do, Danny yells, Oi, mate, you're a few stubby short of a six-pack, which is Australian slang, Ooh. apparently. <laughs> I googled it. Okay. It seems right. Um, and that is going to be... <laughs> Green turns to right and says, Oi, you were at the mouth on this one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to do I Australian, so it's just devolving into, into Cockney. Uh... That's going to be like a I know, 26 yeah, mine, mine got a little cockney there, too. Yeah. You know mm-hmm. what? The green one has a cockney accent. The uh, uh, red, blue, Australian. But it's, got <laughs> it's like a regional thing. <laughs> also, 26, it's of like... course, hits. Stop asking me nonsense questions. <laughs> so that's going to be 2d10 plus a d8, because this is coming from my arcane firearm. It's about the flex. Oh, that's pretty good. Uh, that's a 20 points of fire damage. Whew. Jesus, mother I rolled an 8 Christ. and a 7 and a 5. <laughs> Um, yeah, this guy gets fully burned. You see, uh, he shouts and comes back and wipes away, and there's, like, a scorch all along his face. Um, Yikes. he points his sword and says, Oi, I'll get you for that one. <laughs> Oi. <laughs> Your mom will get me Oi. for that one. I don't That's know That's how he starts every sentence. <laughs> they call him Oi. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you get into character. Uh, Time down for what? Uh, let me see. I'm trying to do, so... The arcane, um, the eldritch cannon can move 15 feet and plug can move 15 feet forward. So both of them are going to use their movement. 5, 10, 15. 5, 10, 15. Um, in doing so, can either of them take a shot at either green or blue from where they're standing? Uh, I think cannon can still shoot. Plug can. Cannon can still shoot at blue. Okay. Yeah. Plug or, is way out. Plug might not make it. Yes. Yeah, I'm sorry. Cannon can shoot at blue or green. Green, he's just gonna have three quarters cover. Okay, from the glass Cannon is bill. going to take the three sh- 
Uh, I gotta name the cannons at some point. If anyone has, if anyone in the audience has any um, cannon name suggestions, please like tweet them at me or something. This is gonna be out <laughs> way after we're done recording all of these. They'll be yeah. named in my heart. It's like a, uh, you know when you like, it's like adopt a adopt a tiger or whatever, and you get to or like name a star. Yeah. It's that, but for uh, Danny's cannons, uh, Force Bliss is gonna fire at him. Let's see if we can hit this bad boy. Okay, not bad. Uh, dirty twenty to hit. Okay. That'll. Uh, oh wait, no, he has three quarters cover. Come on, uh, come on. That'll miss. Ah, rude. The you see, uh, <laughs> part of the glass, uh, the force, uh, hits and scatters off the edge of the glass dome, protecting the spell jamming helm. Mm. Ooh, sorry, Virla. And that'll end uh, Danny's <laughs> turn. All right. Um, okay. That brings us to Kiana. Kiana, fully bloodied. Yeah. Um, yep. But you know what happens when you take out someone in this world. Uh, red and blue are both in spitting distance. Red is looking way yeah. worse. Your first attack on red would have advantage. All your attacks on blue will have advantage. Okay, I have a question about yeah. the, the glass dome. <laughs> because okay. it occurs to me, I have a tactical advantage that these guys do not, which is my slippers of spider climb. Ooh. Yeah. And a bonus action Ooh. disengage I can take for free. <laughs> That, that's absolutely something you could do. Yeah. Yes. I am uh, simply listening, wondering. It... Homebrew, our, our version of the homebrew monk, uh, pretty much the same, except that the uh, bonus action of dodge, dash, and disengage it does not cast. It costs a key point for Kiana. Right. Now, uh, what I'm rogues thinking can do it for is. Free, so, why not monks? Right. So, if the glass dome is, say, sturdy enough to not explode when the arcane oh, yeah, you scatters can walk off on of it. it. Totally. Good. Yeah. Okay. Now, I have a question. Could these guys walk yeah. on it? Uh, they can uh, jump, but they probably don't have slippers of spider climb. So they might have so, like un- disadvantage by difficult terrain if they try to uh, follow they me. They can't even. They might try to. That's a good question. Would it be worth it for okay. them to waste trying to jump? You don't know, but yeah. certainly they're not going to be able to flank you up there. You know? Right now, the other useful thing about that is that my arms have a ten foot reach, Ooh. so I can bonus action disengage up to. Let me move myself. All right, so I can move. I mean, you all know what I mean. Two squares up from where yeah. I am. I will move. I'll go ahead and move again. Two squares up. Thank yeah. you. And yes. I, you'll take a bonus action disengage. You, uh, yeah, expend some Just of your turn here. Uh, the two arms yep. go out. I'm thinking kind of like uh, in Castlevania when they're in the, uh, the, the Belmont library and uh, mm-hmm. yep. Trevor's fighting with just a stick, that horrible bird monster thing. <laughs> um, yeah. And he comes in real close and then its wings go out and push him back. Uh, your mm-hmm. arms kind of come in for defense and then push back and give you just enough space uh, to spider climb your way up this glass dome. So I'm now on the dome and mm-hmm. they're both in range of me. <laughs> that is correct. So uh, you know I'm going... flanking on blue, but red, your first That's attack correct. would have advantage. Uh, or I am you'll going have advantage to... until you hit him. Okay, then I'm going to attack the red one with advantage. And I'm going to use the nicer dice. Well, that's not fantastic. That's a 16, uh, which I'm guessing won't hit. Uh, at advantage, 16 yeah, does not yeah. hit. Well, um, my second attack. But you still have a, you still have advantage because uh, you have advantage yeah. until you hit him. Yep, my second attack. Come on. Uh, 17. 17 will the just hit. The purple dice are yes. betraying me. It will? Oh, yes. thank goodness. The purple dice were really, really not doing so hot. Okay, d6 plus four damage. Come on. Ah! Five points of force damage. Oh, five will not do it. But honestly, I'll take the uh, no longer immediately in hitting range. <laughs> Little breathing uh, room. Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> these guys don't have a great to hit. They rely on tactics like flanking. Um, ha ha, tactics. Uh, they do immense damage too. They're doing 46 yeah, damage. I noticed. Uh, so they but they don't have a great to hit. That's that's the that's the balance of these guys. Um, yeah, mm. boom. Uh, clock. You see, um, radiant energy bursts as one astral arm collides in the chest. Uh, that guy's not looking good. Uh, but it is their turn. Blue will turn back to Enoch uh, and say, uh, "No, my boy. All right, guess it's just you and me then." Red is going to use his jump to clear the dome and will use his action to attack twice. Not an advantage, Akiana. Oh, no. Uh, and green, uh, green is going to do something else. Uh, first, we're going to roll for Enoch. Um, two attacks. One will miss, one will hit. So Enoch takes... Ooh, that's good. Oh, my God. I rolled almost max damage. 
No! Oh, no. Uh, 24 Jeez. damage yeah. total to him. Right, uh, right. He's okay. He's, he, uh, like them, he does not have a great uh, AC, but he's got a lot of hit points. Uh, unlike them, he does not have a great AC, but he has a lot of hit points. Um, well, that's you good. see, it should be a lethal blow, uh, and instead he parries the blade to the side, and it just scratches his uh, his rib cage a little bit, um, and then goes like into the wood. Uh, the Gith Yankee pulls the great sword back out. Uh, this one is going to go 5, 10, 15, 20. Right, he'll jump this way. 15, 20, and land over here. Um, and as he does, he's ah. going to make his two attacks at Kiana. Oh. Interesting. Yep. Uh, moving attacks. You can uh, you can attack mid-movement. That's uh, completely legal. All right, here we go. Two attacks on yeah, Kiana. Just come on. Let's do it. Let's do it. He only... He, okay, he only has a plus four to hit, I believe. All right. So odds are not good on him hitting. That's an eight and a nope. natural 20. Okay. Jeez. Oh, Great. Well, I hope one of you can heal me next turn. <laughs> uh, I have the challenge. So, I mean, I could roll. It's going to be a lot of damage, though. Um, Just do it. <laughs> hey, but Look, think if it's of over how many five, hit points. it's going to KO me. Yeah. Uh, well, hold on. Let's make sure it's not double your max hit points. Otherwise, you'll die. If it's out. not 39, then... It, it might be close. And only because she resists psychic damage. Or so, so it's only 28 points of damage. So you don't die outright. Oh, goody! <laughs> good. Uh, your boots are still sticking you up there. So that's the good thing. Well, but yeah, you see, uh, you see Kiana that's slump. That's kind of awkward. It's, uh, <laughs> it's more so like... In, in, my, in my version... Well... Okay, in my version of D&D, like, no, unconscious no, is like not that. like no. you're a loose fish. Carlos, it means no. like you're in like no Car shape to fight. Like, you're like, you're... Like, <laughs> well, yeah, because she would be just like, like those blow up the guys distance. with the arms. Uh, in my so version, sorry, it's Jenna. you're not you're not like fully like like a limp fish. You're in no shape to fight or defend yourself. Um, okay, cool. So uh, you're in no shape to take any actions uh, other than death saves, but uh, yeah, you're you like slump back. Uh, a huge blow cuts right across you, uh, and Ouch. you kind of staunch the uh, go to stop. You see the blood running down uh, oh, your God. hand as you go to like put put it against the wound on your uh, on your abdomen. Uh, and oh, this last guy is going to uh, bonus action misty step. Oh no! Uh, <laughs> fuck me, dude. Thirty. <laughs> Uh, and then he's going to use the jumps. Uh, he's got 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Hold it's on, fine. wait. Hold on, wait. Maybe he can't make it to you. Oh, get fucked, Hold bro. On. If he doesn't have 60 feet of movement, then he can't. Uh, if, if you're 160 feet away, then he can't make it to you. Uh, would he have taken an attack of opportunity for me? No, he missed. He stepped past you. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, that looks to me like uh, I'm he can't, 70 okay. feet away from him. He can't make it to you. Oh, so hey. he'll take the dodge act. Uh, no, he'll move up because he knows that you're a ranged person. So he'll use his action to dash. Yeah. Boo. So he can't attack now? Uh, no. Correct. But he's in melee with Danny. Well, that's uh, nice. He says, Oi, one more time, what'd you say? Oi. He only starts every sentence with a oi. That's <laughs> right, how of course. people speak, I have right? a mortal yeah, enemy now, and it's this guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's that guy, yeah. Um, I got him, what you what guys. Do? Don't worry. Cool. This one's mine. Um, Right, just, can I... Oh, uh, that Gith Yankee gets a bunch of temporary hit points for uh, bringing you to zero HP. Ah. Hey, oh, I'm not dead yet. The, he's got the bloodlust. Could I possibly, <laughs> is there a way for me to just like le reach over and uh, use yeah, my Yeah, you're, you're tall enough. Yeah, so it's totally, um, you, you've got a high jump tall enough to, like, you've got a great strength yeah. score. You're, you got enough to jump up there and touch her. You'll fall Yay. back down. Like you'll you'll end your turn here. Slide next to the Gideon, but you can jump up there. So, bro, merely need a gentle touch as I cast uh, cure wounds. Oh, goody! Yeah, Finbar's enormous form gracefully rounds the glass dome here and jumps up. Uh, you feel that warmth uh, and the bleeding staunches. You see uh, like red scar tissue on your abdomen where the wound closed. Uh, as uh, Finbar casts Cure Wounds, uh, go ahead and uh, Lalin's, uh, Lalin will pulse and uh, give you a little bit extra healing, I believe, right? Uh, yes, it's an extra D4. Uh, that's and a... the Chalice as well, right? Uh, chalice gives me a D8 to a, another target. Um, 
Uh, oh, so you can so you can double up and hit her again with more healing, or you can hit someone else. Ooh, doubling up might be nice. Yeah, don't worry about Enoch. He's fine. He's got a lot of hit points. Oh. He's not good at killing things. He's good at staying in the fight. Uh, I just. Let me I mean, he may die. These guys. These mm-hmm. guys are no fucking joke. Uh, I. I can keep him up. Oh, okay. Then then I'll double up. Fuck it. Yeah, yeah. Fuck it. Then I'll double up. Cool. Here we go. Oh, uh, that's a six on that. So you nice. gain twenty. Oh, thank goodness. Thank you. Really good. Yeah, and the good news is... Fall back down your spot. Yeah, the good yeah. news is I just checked, and there's nothing in either of my astral forms about them going down when I go unconscious. So I don't need to resummon them. <laughs> oh, hot damn. Whew. Didn't want to burn two more key on that. So the giant astral arms were, like, flopping like the inflatable <laughs> guy. also, also <laughs> <laughs> Does Kiana become difficult terrain in that situation? <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> No, just a little bit sad. Yeah. Oh. It, it uh, was a bummer. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's that's my turn. Nice, Finn. Thank you. Nice. Whew, we love right. the healing thing. Um. Yes. Virla, will you like to attempt anything, or are you just gonna keep going? <sighs> okay. So, if I were to exit my uh, chair, run and do something, and then just go back, by the next turn, would I be able to just continue dashing? Um. And how would that sort of uh, affect Yeah, the, the, the ship will chase. slow down, but I'm not going to count that as a failure. Like, skill checks yeah. are failures. Uh, losing losing one round of speed in this turn, in this case, is um, uh, I'll allow. Right. Okay. But it does and mean the also... dragon might catch up, but... Uh, we'll the cross dra- that bridge the, when we come to it. It's... <laughs> all of the speed stuff is just for... It's like theater of the mind, right? Like, how... We're not oh, counting okay. like you guys are going 12 square, uh, you know, uh, 120 feet around, uh, but the dragon has this speed. It's it's ability checks in the skill challenge. Each time you accumulate a failure, they get closer and get the ability to do something else. So if you get three failures, the dragon's going to catch up. But for now, mm-hmm. uh, two failures means that it's close enough for some of them to board a little bit at a time. Ooh, ooh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Am I within 90 feet of the dragon? No, right? Oh. Um, oh. Oh. No, because you're close enough for them to jump, so I would say it's behind them. It's pretty close, but yeah, within 90 feet. <laughs> what are you going to do, Virla? Uh, I'm... Okay, yeah. I'm just going to get it from my chair, so I'm not actively uh, focusing on it. I totally forgot I had this thing. <gasps> I'm going to che- I'm gonna see the dragon that I can see within range, and I'll cast Earthbind on the dragon. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, holy shit. Dude, if this succeeds, that's definitely going to be a um, on, that's going to be a success. Come on, okay, here's what's up. Let me double check. I believe dragons have a plus four strength save. Uh, yeah, they do. They have a plus four. Which I'm going to roll in the chat here. Uh, what what number are we trying to beat? Uh, it is fifteen. So I'm not uh, eleven and up. One d yeah. You know, twenty 50, 50. plus four. All right, here we go. Oh, oh, oh my god! <laughs> oh, man. Uh, you well, see, can... um, you reach out and yellow bands of energy erupt from oh. either side of this, like a net across the, the chasm. Um, and uh, for a moment you think you caught it, and then it, come, it comes rearing up from behind the ship, and you realize it was just too late. It shrugged off these yellow bands. Oh. That was oh, brilliant. I mean, you got another one of those oh, in well. you? Because... I have, How, I have what are the odds of rolls? Four more? Oh, yeah. All right, we're good then. What, what are the odds of rolls? Two twenties, you know? It's a matter of not... Use... Yeah. 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 It's not a matter it's, of uh, if yeah. you're going to do it, but when. I imagine you, like, when. just, like, mm-hmm. rear view mirror this. Like, you're sitting in the yeah. <laughs> Just, like, look over. I shouldn't look sure. over my shoulder in real life because mm-hmm. then I'm not facing the microphone. Yeah, uh, the, audience. the audience can't see it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, theater. Well, uh, I, got, I got three more of those, so... Incredible. Uh, it's it's brilliant. Um, all right, Enoch. Yeah, and you can keep using your movement to Come go. On, Enoch. Um, okay. Enoch's turn. Can't He's got advantage. Do some punchy punches, punch my boy. Uh, get him! Get him! <sighs> That's a miss. Oh, Enoch, why did That's we save you? He hit. He yes. hits on one. Yes, Enoch. Two attacks at advantage. Eight. Okay, very nice. That's Total damage to blue. It's not looking good. Uh, boom. Takes him. Takes him low. Uh, Danny. This guy has just landed and ran up in front of you. Silver great sword brandished. What will you do? 
Well, Danny is not impressed. Uh, so while she sort of like sizes him up and gives him the like, mm, you're nothing to me, eyes up and down. Uh, the cannon is gonna, the force blast is gonna come out from behind her, 5, 10, 15, and it's, I'm gonna use my bonus action oh, yes, to have fire. it fire at him. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I'm thinking get on the Barbie tonight, and I'm gonna have the cannon fire at him. <laughs> you got, this has been a very painful huh? fight for a lot of reasons. <laughs> this is, I am sorry, so sorry, sorry to our, our audience, and also I refuse to apologize for yes anding Austin's uh, hey, character choice. Is... This is D and D. It sometimes can be a little Austin. cringe, and uh, you have yeah. to uh, you have to accept that audience. If you want the fun, you also gotta I join still... in for the silly voices that sound stupid. Yeah, that's a twenty-five to hit. Oh my god. Uh, yeah. You just stop asking. <laughs> AC is seventeen. If you hit a seventeen, just roll damage. Nice. Uh, <laughs> this makes me feel bad. Oh, wait, Thirteen points of force damage, and he gets pushed five feet away from the cannon, which I do believe is over the edge okay. of the ship. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. So he's gonna make a dex save against your DC. Uh, I'll roll that. I'll roll that as uh, in front of the group as well. Thank you, warrior. He's got a plus two to this. Uh, your DC is fifteen. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, 1d20 plus 2. That's it. Hey! Boom. You see, he goes, uh, <laughs> and he reaches out to grab onto you and just reaches air and then goes flying off into space. So, yeah. Uh, fuck that Incredible. dude. Incredible. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Thanks for visiting. Uh, is he dead? Uh, I'm going to count him as dead. Danny, how many hit points do you have? How many hit points do I have? I have or how many, what's your maximum hit 35, points? 35, and I haven't taken any damage yet this since we had a short right. rest, so it's still a uh, You gain 17 temporary hit points. <laughs> is Danny a tank uh, now? How does, how does Danny feel with this bloodlust that enters her? Mm. I don't feel that different from usual, if I'm being completely honest. <laughs> <laughs> Inspiration. <laughs> She's been had the bloodlust. I feel powerful. I cannot believe there's such a huge jump in the initiative. But Kiana, you're oh, up. Oh, my turn's uh, not over you're... yet. That was just my bonus action. Oh, God. I'm sorry. <laughs> Stupid me. Um, and I believe that the red guy who is now in front of the dome is within range of my uh, firebolt, which is what I'm going to fire at oh, him. Oh, my God. You can... Get him. Get him. <sighs> It feels good to be the tank sometimes. And uh, <laughs> Danny's gonna like nonchalantly look over her shoulder where the guy is plummeting to his death in a very Australian sounding. Oh, slowly getting quieter. Yeah, uh, what's an Australian uh, will help screen? Uh, <laughs> uh, the Australian Crikey. will man? Will man? <laughs> it's just a Crikey. 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 Yeah, Danny but like- that was the Cockney one, right? Australian. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh! <laughs> I'm so sorry to all Australian uh, Sorry to all of our Australian <laughs> listeners uh, for this episode. Uh, and then she'll just turn around and like the glowing goggles sort of like track and lock on to the red guy standing just outside the dome. And I'll pull out the Baronium Fluctuator multi-tool and fire off a firebolt at him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's going to be a Do 23 it. to hit. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. That's 2d10 plus a d8 because it's connected to my arcane firearm. Where are my d10s at? I should stop losing these. I need them to play. Ooh, very, very... <laughs> this guy's so fucked. Uh, 26 oh, no. points of fire damage. Finish him, uh, Danny. Yes! Finish Describe him. Describe it. Hell yes. Uh, you can't get more temporary hit points, because they don't stack, but yeah, more of that bloodlust. Uh, Double tell me blood how this guy lust. dies. Danny's eyes, you can't see them because they're underneath her goggles, just flare a little bit red. From Actually, they, her eyes are like gold kind of hues, so they just like flash a little bit specklier and she feels a little bit warmer inside but danny's um huh. danny's pretty much ready to throw hands at anyone so i don't know how much this realm is actually changing her baseline levels of bloodlust <laughs> yeah that's my turn uh plug will move forward 15 right. more feet he's slowly yes. getting closer to being useful um, a fantastic <laughs> end to this turn all right yeah wow kiana well, I had been planning up. to go and uh, punch the red guy because uh, I was worried he was going to get into the dome, but it appears that problem has been solved. So I will simply right myself and punch 10 feet downwards at the blue guy. Uh, now, I am not flanking him, but he is thoroughly flanked. Is there a yeah, chance I get, get advantage? advantage? Okay. <laughs> Regular attack. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, that's a five, so that's not going to work. Second attack. That is also a five on a different die, so that's not gonna work either. 
Now I am going You're to. You're having a hard time riding yourself. But, I am not liking yeah. this fight so far. I'm going to burn a this key point to fl flurry of blows, so and I'm going to, to hit him two more times because I kind of want this guy dead. <laughs> He's not the guy who really did a number on me, but that guy just exploded. So I'll take <laughs> what I can get. That was a two. Why are my dice betraying me? <laughs> Final attack. That was a four. That was <laughs> no. Wow. <laughs> Well, that Kiana, was, yeah. Oh no. The yes. stalwart uh, unfailing cannot land a blow on this guy. All of these uh, dice are in the yeah. shame corner now. <laughs> I think feeling feeling a little bit more uh, in tune with that, that inside of you. Yeah, there's a little bit of fear. That's just, it's suddenly the awareness of it makes it hard to ignore. And yeah, yep. you're just having a hard time actually getting through his defenses. He sneers up at you. Yeah, uh, all right, laugh all you can. Um, you're too far away, and he is surrounded. Uh, he doesn't like he doesn't like Finbar, but he really hates Gitzerai, so he's gonna go for Enoch. Ugh. My twenty hit points are safe for another round. <laughs> two natural ones on his two attacks. Eat it! Oh, oh! Yeah. Who's laughing Correct. now? <laughs> uh, he comes in with the sword. And you see Enoch is expecting it, and the two hands clasp, and now he's holding the, the <gasps> great sword between his two hands, Buffy versus Angel style, yes. and will not oh. let it go. <laughs> uh, I love yeah, that we got a Buffy reference. Yeah, the last guy to be steering the ship. There's, there's two more. I wish there was more time for Buffy references. It's not that kind <laughs> of game. That's how monks do it. It's more, it's more of a Star Wars Firefly kind of game. Uh, mm, yeah. Uh, next sure. season, we'll I didn't do, want to bring uh, up. Fire, uh, Buffy. Uh, Finbar. <laughs> This dude is trapped and distracted. Finish him. By the way, uh, succeeding on the last encounter gave you guys a success if you oh. win this encounter, which will also give you a success and bring you really close to like, succeeding in this skill challenge. And then we can try ducking down underneath them and having them fly ahead of us, right? The, mm -hmm. <laughs> they will totally <laughs> if succeed. If you want to try that, you can do it. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. All right. Um, and then Finn, we do a full do? reverse, Mr. Sulu. Well, that, might, that might, that might uh, conflict with the whole earth thing. Mm, true. Hmm. He had left his longbow uh, on some other section of the ship, but there's one last weapon he doesn't particularly use all that often, and that is his uh, his bonking stick. Yes. Um, you know, used to finish <laughs> off kills. Um, so he takes out his club. Uh, as a bonus action, I will cast Shillelagh. Uh, oh, uh, yes. And you, I will... You watch... <laughs> Fantastic. Go ahead. I'm going to bonk him. Hey, uh, the bong. Bonk him. Uh, at advantage, because I'm flanking. At advantage. Yes, yes. Uh, okay, Who? okay, that's a two and a 13, a total of 19 to hit. No, that'll wait, hit. Plus eight, plus eight, 21 to hit. Okay, yeah, that'll, that'll definitely hit. Okay, so it's a D8 plus four. It's a six plus four, total of 10. 10 now. So close. Okay, uh, pixies come through. Yes. <laughs> right in the kisser? Yes, pixies. Which spice Pixie is it this cut. time? Which one's like landing the hit? Uh, this one. Okay, let me look at my list. Uh, <laughs> Not to make you do research, but I've, I genuinely Cardamom. love how much all these pixies are Turmeric. named after spices. Uh, this is dill. Yes, dill. Dill? <laughs> yes, dill. <laughs> <laughs> when are we going to see? When are we going to see old bay, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Old, Old Bay bed. can barely get out of bed oh. nowadays. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> but he likes to hear all the stories from our adventures when we come home. Oh. So, oh, that's very uh, sweet. Uh, he, uh, Dill does an extra three points of um, piercing. Yeah, you only needed one. Yes, Dill! You see yes, Finbar Dil. pulls out the stick. Um, his Fomorian gauntlet, his arm seems to swell, and with one arm comes through. Uh, what happens? Tell, tell me how you finish this guy. Uh, right above the head, he crumples straight down to the ground. <laughs> Bonk. Crumples down to the ground. Uh, and I'm going to say, don't touch the girl. Aww. Aww. Oh. Thanks, Finbar. <laughs> Fearla. Uh, yeah, if you can yeah, succeed at this, I'll count it as a, as a success. In the, First of all, that's a success for you guys. Uh, and if you can succeed in taking this dragon out, that'll get you a success. Come on, I'll, I'll try. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll try Earthbind again. Come on, Fearla. All right. One more 50-50 shot, Stringy, baby. Twenty saving throw for them. Plus four. All may right. The, may the force guide you. Here we you. go. <laughs> you are one with the force, and the force uh, is with you. Uh, uh, it's a 
It's going down, uh, though. It was only a 17 a this time. time. Ah. Burst through a second time. Uh, the ship is nearing and nearing. All right. Uh, the, the combat drops. Uh, is there any any more skill checks you guys would like Ooh. to uh, employ? Uh, if someone... Uh, so, I'm going to say uh, give other people a chance, and then if uh, you want to try one more... Uh, Earth bind. Sure. Love, uh, yeah, yeah. We gotta at least let someone else go first, uh, and potentially uh, fail. So putting together the pieces um, of a plan, the flamethrower is like at the front of the ship, just kind of resting there, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's accurate. Okay, how do I have any sense of how usable it is? Uh, it's not set up. Okay. So okay. not really usable. So you don't really have any sort of. You like you to set it up. Yeah, you yeah. need to set it up and then like load it with ammunition and stuff. Right, right, right. Okay. Oh shit. Uh, sorry. I just realized the, my visage of the astral self should have given me advantage on my insight check that one time that we failed. <laughs> oh. Uh, uh, rip. Um. Now you know. Yep. Yeah, next time, baby. Is there? I can throw a dart at him, but I don't think it'll do much. <laughs> yeah. My my only Skill thought check. is anything. The idea that we drop and let them go forward is does it look like the tunnel turns at all in front of us is there anywhere where like are we sort of going in a uh, straight line or is it sort of like veering and zigzagging it's more or less straight line and you're coming out the other end of it soon okay is there mm. a way that we can like put up a wall behind us like like a spell of some kind that could mm. do that what do i have i don't have i exclusively have cantrips currently um great but if anything could be dislodged with a firebolt perhaps i could maybe knock some metal off um can we hit another paneling okay yeah. then let, let's mm. pick well, another we can try section that of the again cube. but pick another section of the cube and try and knock some stuff off see what we can mm -hmm. scrap up oh uh, we, can, we can try that again uh, uh enoch plays his hands together is going to cast a, a quick spell on himself large. cool uh large. what uh <laughs> what are you guys going to try not in large uh, oh. uh, there's no physical change that accompanies it all right. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I uh, investigation. Uh, what can I? What can I do for investigation? Can I? Well, it's just a tunnel. I, I don't want to risk another insight check at this point. <laughs> I mean, you do have advantage. I do. Uh, I mean, and you're not really supposed seven. to repeat. That's the thing. I don't um, want to cheat. But, yeah. Yeah, but it's also, I, I would allow it because uh, last time you should have rolled uh, mm. at advantage. So. Well, I guess, uh, but with my I, luck from today. We still got. <laughs> We still got the failure in there, so that's fine. If you want to to retry it, I would allow Well, you I... know, may as well, if it ain't broke. Yeah, go All right, it. let's give it one more shot, and I'm gonna roll these dice one at a time. And that first one is a All seven. Right, what what uh, DC did I set last time? Do you remember, 20? Oh, fuck, I think you probably did. Uh, oh my God! Well, good news, everybody. Oh. <laughs> uh, I rolled a dirty 20 on the second one. Ooh. I got a 13. Ooh. Oh, amazing. Hell yeah. Whew. Advance it's working out. Oh man, okay. Awesome. All right. Uh yeah. Uh so describe how you're using your inside here. Uh I think I'm I'm like scanning the I, I think the thing is the gravity of, of these cubes is really funky, it looks like. Like everyone's just kind of standing yeah, on every surface. It pulls it kind of, yeah, kinda of like pulls inwards, but it's a little unclear. Right, but I are think I, in the tunnels. yeah, but I think I'm like starting to get kind of a feel for how it specifically works in the tunnel, and it's like okay, we're, I was looking up, but we don't need to look up. There's things all around us that'll fall in the right direction we need it to, because like we're going down right the middle of this Correct. tunnel, so yep. stuff would probably just accumulate in the middle of the tunnel if we knock it loose. So I'm like scanning in different directions, and I think I spot something kind of more on the low end of the ship that uh, if we dislodge, it'll like fly up behind us. Uh, and just kind of get in the way of the pursuing ships, I hope. Yes. All right. Yeah, you point this out. Um, uh, yeah, what do you say? Let, let me hear this little interaction. What do you say to Virla and Virla? How do you react? Because uh, <laughs> you already tried this and it didn't work. Yeah. Uh, I, I think we were looking too linearly, and I think if we hit that thing down there, it'll fly up behind us because the gravity's funky in here. Oh, I see what you mean. I'm just like on the glass, like pressing my face up against it. <laughs> yeah. It's that way. <laughs> yeah, up directly above him on the dome. Yeah, it comes through all muffled. I uh, like to be tall. Yeah. Oh, very like beautiful mind um, the math. Mm. You beautiful mind the math. Get the mast, the broken, already broken mast, right where you need it to be. Boom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this huge. Um, it looks like it was probably some like 
siege engine, but now it's just a smoking, flaming pile of wood, uh, is caught and goes flying up. It spins, bounces off the side, and flies towards the ship. Uh, you see the ship fully dragonfly. It's too big. It breaks so close to ending the skill challenge. Only the dragon's still in pursuit of you. Mm. Gee, I wonder <laughs> what I can do. <laughs> uh, All right. Well, let's Three see. more shots, bruh. Yeah, let, uh, I'll, I'll try it. Um, you want to try? Okay. Come yeah, on, yeah. Birla. Earthbind. Dull Earthbind again. Third time's the charm. Uh, yep. All right, here we go. Oh, oh it's going back it. up again. It yeah. bursts again. Enoch uh, is going to look tired. at <laughs> Is going to come over to the uh, the back here and uh, look up at Kiana. Hello. Uh, you see he reaches for, he has that red. Now you recognize it. It's a red dragon scale belt. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Um, he unfastens it and tosses <gasps> it up to you. Gonna ride the oh. oh. What? And he goes, it seems I was only due for one miracle this day. <gasps> what? No. You don't know. No. You don't... <laughs> Sis. <laughs> Thank you for saving me. Not Wait, the mentor! I... Allow me to return the favor. Uh, yeah, and he's gonna jump. Use, he cast. He cast. He cast jump on himself. <laughs> no. Uh, was the spell, and he's going to jump no. off. Um, ah! And he's going oh, to I try to dragon. grab this dragon. He's gonna do the end in order to check. like pull it away. No. I'm gonna be clear. This is a failure in my eyes. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> we the Paraspera have failed you. Break the ship. Full reverse, Mr. Sulu. You guys have eight successes out of nine. You need a nine to get away from this. You need uh, eight successes and two failures. It was one or the other. Uh, and he's going to basically sacrifice himself ah! as final success uh, after you guys uh, missed so many times in here uh, on a bunch of things, honestly. But uh, I know. It, it was brilliant planning. But you see, uh, he hands the belts, gives a nod, turns to Finbar, says, thank you for the meal. Uh, and he's just gonna, he jumps off the back. Uh, the dragon comes, goes to bite at him. He misses and he grabs onto a wing and kind of pulls. He's not very strong, but the dragon's not huge. It's, uh, it's, it's only a medium sized creature. Uh, uh-huh. And he's able to pull the wing and the dragon sort of spirals to the edge uh, and they land in the middle of a big battlefield going on. No! Um, Yuck! Did you guys lose our um, gift? Your final success. Ah! No, this sucks. Hold on. Cost? At what cost? <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't have any more spells. Oh, no, I don't have any spells left. There's nothing. They're all they're all offensive. Why did I think that? In a, why did I take all offensive? Oops, spells? All fire damage has really come back to What's bite my us? jump yeah. speed? Can uh, I? your jump is? Uh, if you uh, hold on, I'll tell you what your jump distance is. Um, uh, what is your? Tell me what your strength score is. My strength score is uh, 10. Okay. Oh, wait. No, you're not 10 feet tall. No. <laughs> Your strength wait, score okay, is Okay, hold 10. on. To, to be uh, clear, you there's are... nothing else uh, chasing us, right? Because we, we dealt with the dragon flight. Uh, there's nothing you lost. Yep. Okay. Uh, Step the yeah. wind. You have, you have, <laughs> uh, you have a 20-foot horizontal jump. So that could make it to the edge, and you have... Uh, if you use your action and your bonus action to run, that gives you three times whatever your movement speed is. Uh, How far down did he fall or go? Uh, he's as, f- uh, I mean, you guys, like he jumped he jumped pretty far. He jumped like 50 feet back onto this dragon uh, ah! and you guys kind of kept going. But it's uh, with, with all your movement, I could say you might be able to get to him. I mean, he is, I, yeah. I, I mean, I can, there's, I there's like bad that. guys around him though. I know, I I can do that, I can grab him, and then I have Step of the Wind, and I can double my jump distance to see. It's gonna, it's Step of the, so I've already taken your Step of the Wind into account to get there. Right, but then it doubles my jump distance. It's gonna be your whole turn to get there. Right, what I'm thinking is I can grab him. It doubled it to 20 feet. Right, what, really? My jump distance is 10 feet? Uh, horizontal with a running jump, yeah. Okay, uh, I was thinking more to get back up to the ship. I, I, I have something that could potentially... Uh, this I was going to say, what you really a... need is like a dimension door or something. Mm. Uh, well, well, I can't okay. do that. Um. Birla. Austin, Austin, let me... let me you have let me an idea. Some, yeah. Let me put something to you. I, uh, I uh, telescope out my staff of the clockwork swarm. Ooh. And uh-huh. uh, okay. I, I, I use an action to create you an used insect it cloud. 
I did, so I have only five left. Um, okay. I do. I, oh, I, right. I can use an action. I can use an action to uh, create an insect cloud. So, <laughs> centered around me is uh, a thirty-foot radius of just small flying insects. In the dome. Uh, <laughs> the bug dome. Uh, well, okay. Well, it it, center, it follows me, so I, I exit the dome. Okay. Um, oh no. Okay. Yeah. No, it's fine. Uh, okay. I can also cast a giant insect uh. and create. What is this? <gasps> it, it, my idea is that I create a rideable insect that uh, follows my verbal commands. Um, <laughs> Holy shit. Do you okay. need the insect? Okay. Do, <laughs> Rubo, oh, do you need God. the right, insect on. swarm on it for that? Um, well, cause... I can transform up to up to five wasps, essentially, or wasp flying like creatures. Uh, okay. So my, my, my idea was just I would just enlarge one or however many of you guys wanted to, to, to fly and try and and try and get, and try, try and do this extraction mission. My verbal commands would essentially be fly to where uh, fly, fly to where Enoch is, and fly back. Yes. Uh, yeah. So, can I? If it's just Kiana, can I do two? It basically, it's it's the it's the landing party plus one because one for Enoch. Uh, um, the giant wasp is a medium beast, so you're gonna need two to carry any regular sized person. Right. Oh dang. Okay. Uh, okay, then then uh, four wasps. Uh, two for Kiana, two for Enoch. I'll run up All and right. take the helm as he's doing this okay. so someone is still flying the yep. spell good, jammer. Good idea, yeah. 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 We're going to want Danny an take extraction. The <laughs> Danny uh, take Danny the wheel. Danny goes in. Um, <laughs> they, got, they have a 50-foot fly, which is pretty good. With a dash, they can they can get you there, and they might be able to catch up to the ship if you slow it down a little bit. Yes, uh, please do. Bank it around. Right. So th- we're going theater of the mind, and here's what's going to happen. Okay. Mm-hmm. You guys mm-hmm. get there. With the, with the wasps. The wasps are going to drop you. We're going to have one round of combat with Enoch and Kiana mm-hmm. against a uh, dragon. red dragon. <laughs> Shit. Oh, and God. Then, um, and then before... the wasps are going to extract them. <clears throat> okay. Can I cast guidance on um, uh, Kiana before she leaves? Yeah. Okay. Could you maybe cast a heal spell? Actually, you know what? I could probably pop a healing potion before I go down there, right? I have no, I have no spells left. Yep. That's yeah, okay. Have, I have you've three got a, you've got a healing potions. Here. Okay. okay. How so much? You've got uh, time to drink one. Uh, also, just for, for for posterity, I've used up all of my charges today. Apparently, I have to roll cool. a d20, and on a one, it destroys it. But I rolled oh, a nine. No. So okay. Oh, okay. 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 Two. All right. Too bad that magic item is really strong. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So you the belt. Uh, he throws his belt up to you and goes uh, off. Kiana, Absolutely what do you do not. <laughs> not right. the first decent authority figure I've ever had in my life. <laughs> uh, okay. Mentors. Danny sits down in the helm. The ship slows a little bit, but not too much. Uh, yeah, out comes, uh, you hear a buzzing as um, the colossal rod extends and Virla comes out. Uh, four mechanical wasps um, expanding. Okay. Uh, playing a little hard, uh, fast and loose with the actions here, but yeah, uh, yeah, it's yeah, okay. Yeah. It's gonna be. We <laughs> still have. Like all right. Half of, half here's of what's up. Passed for me to have done all of this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Please so. give me an initiative for Kiana. Oh God. I'll, all right. I'll go ahead and drag a token. We're doing this all theater of the mind. You guys yep. are just gonna be in melee with the dragon. <gasps> a 19, which Clear. means my initiative is 27. <laughs> nice. Nice. All right. We are <gasps> the audience now. Okay, okay, okay. And the uh, okay, the wasps okay. are essentially okay. going on your turn. All right, Great. first we'll roll Enoch. Enoch gets a nine. Okay. We're at 27, which is Yeah, bonkers. baby, 19. Here we go. Here comes the dragon. All right. Mm-hmm. He's a plus zero dex. He also rolls a nine, so he's actually going last. As far as I'm concerned, we just need to survive this round and then we're fine. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. okay. Here we go. Uh, okay. Kiana, you land next to next to the dragon, next to Enoch. Damn straight I do. All right. What would you like to do? I'm going full punchy on this thing. <laughs> uh, okay. Is there a chance I can land opposite Enoch so we're flanking him and I get advantage on all my attacks? <laughs> uh, go for it. Yay! Okay. Attack number one. Uh, 19? Uh, that'll hit. <gasps> oh, thank nice. goodness. Okay. The other one was a two. Uh, <laughs> all right. Deck them. Okay, six points of force damage. Okay, Second attack. This thing doesn't look, it barely feels that. Of course it does, but we just need to survive this round. Second attack. It's only a medium sized creature, it's a one wing. But... Well, 15, oh. Uh, oh, fi- we 15 to hit that time. Uh, 15 will not hit. Okay. 
Flurry of blows, I don't care. One more key point down. Let me just grab my action. Okay. <laughs> 14. How many hit points does do you have, by the way? 27 right now. Uh, I've been healed up pretty Okay. Good. It's close yeah. to my max, which isn't great. Uh, and my final attack. I swear to God, it's another 15. <laughs> oh, AC 17. I know. <laughs> Uh, can you use inspiration on attack rolls? Yeah, yeah. Guidance, go for right? it. Does guide, what does guidance oh, right, what does uh, guidance, guidance do? Is on, guidance is a d4 on an ability check, not an yeah. attack. Ah, oh, right. okay. So uh, you could have used it to get a higher initiative. Yeah, but you didn't need um, it. Yeah, I don't uh, think that would uh, be... And you might, that's maybe all there's something really. else you'll need to use it yeah. for. Yeah. Kiana, because you have jumped off the ship and are doing something very cool, even if ill-advised, but ill-advised is like my favorite kind of thing in D&D, please use my <laughs> inspiration to try and hit uh, if you would like to add. Let me ask. Okay, how does that work? Would you like to try, have you ever tried Stunning Strike? Would you, would like, you to like to try, to try Stunning, stunning Strike? strike I mean, I could try a Stunning Strike. Uh, they'll need to I mean, save. It's, ma- they'll need to make a con save. Never. Okay, yeah, yeah fine. Yeah, I'll burn my second to last key point on a Stunning Strike on the one punch that hit. He has to roll a 10 or higher to get the DC 15. Ooh. All right, here we go. Ooh. Here we go. Come on, come on, come on. It's not my day. Uh, it's fuck, oh, it's not my day. They got a 23. This uh, dragon. This well, dragon okay, wait, you, you, you hit once, right? You dealt damage. You did stunning strike. Yeah, I did. Uh, is Dandy giving you a sec- an inspiration to try and hit a second time? I think she said so, but I'm not like, so how does that work? Um, uh, roll a d6. Yeah, you to add a d6 you hit a, to in this case, if you hit a two or higher, then you hit because you only need a 17. Take one of those. Ha! Ah, I rolled a six. Nice. There we go. Okay, awesome. you hit. That's the power. Okay. Of go ahead, roll damage. So it's d6 plus four again, and uh, hit. You really are. Really All right, this one so is seven force damage, and I'm gonna burn my last key point to try and make that one a stunning yes, strike too. Come on, come on. All right. Ten or higher. All the juju is come going on, to this dragon failing. All right, I'm about to I'm about to press this enter button. Just so you know, this creature has uh, just do it. Just it do it. It has fire breath, uh, <laughs> and it has a bite attack. Just get it over with. So, here we go. As far as I'm concerned, if the wasps turn, can extract me. Bad. The wasps can extract me. Yes. <laughs> That's a nice one. Not one. Not one. You got oh, one. No. Oh my god. <laughs> Kiana, you essentially end this oh. fight. So tell me, you, even though you don't kill this dragon, this is gonna be enough time for you yes. guys to get out. Oh yes. my god! Tell me how you do this. Uh, really big uppercut right in its dragon jaw. Yeah. I want a KO screen on a street fight. The K- the force oh. the force oh. comes in and crack. You see dazed oh. dragon eyes. Uh, he's stunned until the end of your next turn. Okay. Get on the wasp, uh, get on the wasp, get on the wasp right you, now! <laughs> uh, you feel uh, that that sentience inside you, like, standing ovation cheer. Aw, thanks, inner self. And, uh, <laughs> Enoch, uh, Enoch comes over to you. Why did you return? That was get on the whoosh. wasp, get on the wasp! Only authority oh, figure God. I've ever respected in my uh, life, get two on the wasp! Giant, <laughs> two giant fucking nightmare wasps show up and grab his, grab his like, levels. Same for you, uh, the dragon's turn passes. Yes! Uh, yeah, I'm gonna count that as that success. Is... Uh, Ooh, baby. You guys, uh, Clutch holy natural fuck, one. Uh, the ship, the ship, the, the ship pulls back just enough for these wasps to drop you. Um, oh. The dragon shakes off its I stun, but you see now the, uh, the armies of Akron are bearing down on it. Oh, <laughs> baby. Uh, you guys <sighs> exit out the other side of yeah, the, we're getting the out cube. Of here. Um, the ringing of steel on steel enters the air again. This place is great, uh, guys. We should stay here more oh. often. <laughs> Oh. Uh, is Danny gonna keep driving or is Danny is gonna come back? <laughs> battle cry will, screaming will, like ah! and just going at maximum speed. Danny, please exit the vehicle. <laughs> <while I make rise. laughs> you very politely move her, uh, sit back down. The ship skids, uh, banks, uh, the broken mass swinging kind of wildly, and you guys move past, uh, uh, taking the wide berth around the uh, metal cube you just exited. And all at once, that feeling of rising rapidly through water as you crest back into the astral sea. Okay. Uh. Let's just go all to right. Sigil now, okay? How about how about that? Are there any other gifts? Can I do a perception check to see if there's anyone else around <laughs> us as we exit the portal? Roll perception check. I swear to God. Ooh, with my minus one, that is a, a one. <laughs> it's a dirty <laughs> one. <laughs> Well, we're uh, alone, guys. There can be Githrond at any moment. You gotta... 
<laughs> I think we're perfectly safe. You gotta safe. keep an eye out. We're booking Constant it. We're vigilance. Booking it. <laughs> Don't um, worry, guys. Yeah, I'm gonna... Yeah, Viral is booking it. Okay. Whew. Let's take, uh, let's take, uh, Enoch down to the sick bay. Make sure everyone's all right. Heal him yeah, up. Enoch's Get really okay. Food. I don't care. Everybody, nobody, no more fighting. We're Man, I didn't much. get to fire breath anyone. Oh, no. Hey. We've got the market yeah, cornered of fire base seven. seven. It's seven only fires. 76 fire damage. <laughs> I have it's only seven. I have <laughs> 94 effective hit points right now. Oh yeah. As soon as when I when you guys went to Akron, I was like, "This is actually this is hard." But if they if they trend towards winning, yeah, it's gonna get really easy because yeah. the more you win in Akron, the easier it gets to win. That's the whole point of the, of the war. Yeah. Wow. As huh. far as Danny uh, is concerned, Akron so... is a delightful place. I exited with full hit points up to like fifty three. <laughs> Look, it's fine yeah, if it's not it's like tired. heroic sacrifices, Bill. True. It's a bad place for mentors. I don't like the mentors. scenery. It's what happened that I didn't like. <laughs> Um. Oh my God. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I yeah, guess... everyone goes downstairs, and uh, yeah, you, your sick bay is basically the dining room. So <laughs> yeah, just gonna lie start patching on the off. nice, comfortable floor for a minute. <laughs> Get some soup out. There's a nice rug in there. Yeah, I'll start yeah. like fixing up the engines and stuff because I assume we've sustained. Well, first of all, you broke my mask. Yeah, you're gonna need to take. Like, <laughs> you're gonna need to like take a day and probably spend some gold to get this thing uh, fixed all the way. Uh, you didn't geez. bust the. You rolled high, so you didn't bust the engine. So it's gonna be. You don't, you're not going to need to materially fix the engine. The engine's just going to need to be, like, yeah. you know, tinkered well, with a little bit. When we get to Nothing Sigil, we'll, we'll, Sigil we'll, we'll have time to, to uh, patch it all yeah. up before we head back. So, oh, uh, boy. yeah. We're, I'm going to give Enoch his fancy belt back because I don't like that he tried to die to give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he accepts it back. Um, many gifts from you this day. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Well, thanks for not dying. Seems it's another dead I owe you. Uh, don't mention it. One life in the face of four others. A small price to pay. No, 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 no. I don't trade lives. We're not doing that. Okay? No. On this ship, which I, we watch out for our own. We would appreciate yeah. if you covered some of the repair costs to the ship, though. If you, Like, if you're looking for an exchange sort of situation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, I'm a monk. I carry... Uh, I'm... Yeah, I know, uh, right? Material material <laughs> possessions sworn off I have for money. All this stuff about money is so weird. Danny will just sulkingly walk back towards the engine room. <laughs> a um, life, limbo, a small price to pay money, for fixing the engine. We simply need to think of money, and it appears, so. Hey, Danny, do you want to go to Limbo next? I will go anywhere, uh, pretty much any time, as long as the ship is functional, which it's becoming increasingly less functional <laughs> as we continue towards Sigil. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah. Wow. We got it. We had a car chase um, episode. You hand him the belt. Uh, yep. He he fingers it for a moment uh, and then uh, offers it back to you and says, uh? "You saved twice my this day. You saved my life. Please. Um, it's a rite of passage for Gitzerai to obtain one. But oh dang, um, there will be more adventures to be had. I'm sure I will find some suitable replacement. Thank you. Always more adventures. That's the best thing about being out here. What's it do? Yeah, don't, I'm curious uh, about this magical don't, bell. Don't over, <laughs> don't uh, underestimate uh, rest and respite, though. It's uh, yeah, yeah. Time and a place. Quiet time for contemplation is needed. Yes, um, it definitely. is. Hold on, I wrote it down somewhere. Yes. Well, I can, I can. I, can I think I wrote it down. Yes, we've got two identify spells ready. Uh, to you go. guys, you yeah. guys, uh, you guys have a bunch of stuff to identify. Oh, so yeah. You didn't identify the weapons or the armor <laughs> oh, you got shit. last adventure. Oh right, I forgot oh, about yeah, that yeah, stuff. Yeah. Uh, Danny and Virla cool. can have a little powwow so, in the engine room, just like set up the ritual spell for identify. <laughs> you <Yeah>. start <laughs> blasting oh, them off. <laughs> he, ba I, I basically Virla basically um, reset his level one spell slots in preparation uh, during the short rest in preparation for the uh, identify. Yeah. Atom. So, uh, do we also get a long rest? Bring then? up the. Uh, you guys oh. are gonna get you guys get a long rest. Oh um, my goodness! It's gonna take you the better part of a day to get to Sigil. Yep, you guys get a long rest. You make it to Sigil uneventfully. Um, Danny, you spend some time fiddling with the ship. You guys identify uh, all your magic items. Uh, let's let's work upwards in terms of how cool. Oh. It is. Uh, so uh, <laughs> soul coin. Oh, let, me, let me bring up soul coins real quick. Soul coin. Uh, yes. Because if you want to identify the soul coin, it yeah. will tell you how to dispel them. Each uh, coal has a unique soul. A coin has a unique soul in it. Uh -huh. So it's a completely different person trapped in each one uh, uh, via the Curse of a Night Hag. 
Uh, each soul has three charges. Um, you can expend one charge uh, to do one of the following. Drain life, uh, which ge- uh, gives you 1d10 temporary hit points. Or query, which you telepathically ask the soul um, a question and uh, it gives you a short answer back. Freeing a soul. So casting a spell that removes a curse frees the soul from the soul coin, uh, as does expending all the coin's charges. Um, Wait, so the using coin the coin itself- frees the soul? Yeah, that doesn't seem right. I believe it should destroy the soul. Uh, it's, uh, using No, using the coin destroys the soul. Um, okay. uh, a soul can also be free from destroying the coin that contains it. A, a soul coin can, has an AC of 19, one hit point for each charge it has remaining, and immunity to all damage except that which is dealt by a hellfire weapon or an infernal war machine's furnace. Uh, hellfire and then we just have a pile sm- of gold, right? It just leaves like a big pile uh, of... It's a smashed coin. <laughs> well, but um, like raw gold, you know? It could be reminted into... Uh, I, figured, I don't know uh, why enough. I'm putting opinions about money as if I know how it works. <laughs> Hellfire weapons uh, function as normal weapons, except that any mortal soul killed by them uh, is immediately sent to hell and is born uh, as a uh, the lowest ranking demer, which is uh, a demon. Sorry, lowest ranking devil, which is a lamor. Uh, huh. Basically, you can yeah. damn a, condemn a soul to hell by killing someone with this. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I like these very much. <laughs> no, we have Hellfire. Uh, but they can be got, used to destroy the coins. Got a bunch of them. Uh, or casting remove curse or dispel good and evil freeze the coins as well. The plate armor, uh, the half plate you found, uh, is uh, uh, unidentified. You learn this is a Canian half plate forged on the coldest layer of hell. Uh, this is uh, an armor that signifies uh, uh, membership to uh, the Hell Troopers, which are a uh, order of like shock troops that fight in Avernus. Um, and it grants, uh, wearing it grants you resistance to cold damage. So it is a half plate resist cold. Hmm. Does anyone here Finally, wear armor? I do. Oh, good. Yeah. It is, yeah. It's it's metal half plate. So uh, anyone who has, me- it's, anyone who has medium armor should wear it. <laughs> uh, nice. Finally, the item that you received is a dragon hide belt. Okay. This finely detailed belt is made of dragon hide. While wearing it, you gain a bonus to your saving throw DCs of your key features. Uh, it's an uh, uncommon magic item, so you gain a plus one. In addition, you can use an action to regain key points equal to a roll of your martial arts die. You can't use this action again until next so, dawn. Sorry, just a sec. I'm writing. I'm writing this up. Uh, dragon hide. I hide. will add. I will add the magic item to your inventory after this. But yeah, your awesome. saving throws for then. your key goes up by one. And once a day, you can use an action to roll a dice and get some key points back. Oh, perfect. So, yeah, it's good for, like... I can use more stunning strikes now. More short rests. Yeah. Correct. You have to spend a whole action doing it, but yeah. Right. Uh, you can... Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, you guys arrive in Sigil. Uh, customary Modrons uh, take your uh, fee for docking, um, and you guys are going to have to be in port for uh, a day or two getting the ship fixed. Uh, Enoch... Uh, as you get uh, kind of in a goodbye, you guys kind of line up and he uh, finds you as well. Um, Nods to each one of you. Uh, first to Kiana. Um, he says, take good care of that. And if you'd ever need to find me, the secrets of the uh, citadels in Limbo are carefully guarded by the Gitzerai, but... Uh, wear this belt, you might be considered a friend among them. Uh, Thanks. Take seek care out, of yourself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> seek out the Guildmaster Reese in Sigil sure. if you have need of locating me in Limbo. Will do. Take care of yourself. Please don't go punching any more dragons without help. Some time of respite and uh, contemplation, I think, for myself. Yes. I miss our gardens. Uh, he goes to... Uh, he says, I believe it is you I have to thank for my timely rescue. So, for your quick thinking. Thank you. It, well, it is you that we have to thank for our, our success, ultimately, in the end. So, one debt has been repaid immediately. I think you and I understand each other quite well. Aww. <laughs> Would you uh, like to be our captain? <laughs> no, we already asked him that. We already there asked him that. There it is. We're uh, waiting. He goes to Finbar. Um, he says, the think you're not the worst thing to roam on the Astral Sea. So, take care of them. I'll do my best. Again, thank you for the meal. 
It's um, delicious. One little thing for the road, though. And he pulls out like a little a baggy Aww. magical uh, Tupperware. You made him a plate. With, uh, uh, he yeah. graciously accepts. Uh, he says, uh, "Floats it around." Uh, normally, a good turn uh, among the Gitsarai uh, demands another, um, but you've done too much for me to repay. So many thank yous. Mm -hmm. um, he comes to oh, Danny. No. He goes, um, "Nice goggles." Uh, just is walks that, away. Is that, is that a <laughs> Did I learn a gift curse word? <laughs> yeah, yeah. uh, <laughs> he stop. He's you swearing gift. He turns back. Damn. Said, he really just like remember that. One. Fuck you and the left. Gith, <laughs> the greatest gift. The gift. Uh, uh, he, he 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 turns back. He says, "Remember that one. The gift Yankee. <laughs> Don't forgive slights easily. So if you should run into them again." Yeah, feel you bad. <laughs> that is great. Uh, I'm so uh, glad we didn't I let this guy you. die. It actually just he disembarks. Uh, <laughs> congratulations, guys! Wow. You survived uh, the terrors of the oh, Astral Sea, uh, the uh, infinite plane of war in Acheron, uh, an immense skill challenge, nine successes. You guys need nine successes, um, <sighs> which is an insanely hard skill challenge. But they're so much fat. They're they're pirates who chase ships down. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, you can't they're, chase they down succeed in the list a lot. She's and rock a solid. With like, spung, two other, like three other combat encounters with it. And, yeah. <laughs> Holy cannoli. And it came with a bunch of other combats. <sighs> oh, man. <sighs> so much fun. Um, thank you, everyone, for playing. Thank you, everyone, for listening. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, another fast-paced episode. Uh, next week, you guys deserve a break. You know? <laughs> That's why we're going back Shut to hell. Episode. Well, there's something... <laughs> <laughs> we'll do something nice, no more nice and easy, you know? Stuff, okay. <laughs> we'll do, yeah, the, the lower planes. You guys have had two encounters in the lower planes. By the way, 50% of the universe is much nicer than this. I don't <laughs> I think this has been we great. Can, we can literally only go up from here. <laughs> yeah. Well, you could have headed to the graying wastes. Mm, yeah. Those are pretty bad. That, that gets worse, but, uh. Holy you know, God. it's just where the uh, oblivion lies chained. Oh, nice. To the bottom of oh, creation. But, sounds yeah. pleasant and festive. Incredible. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for coming along. Uh, yeah. And we'll see you next week for another adventure with the crew of Paraspera. Woohoo! Bye, bye. What was that gift curse word to take us out? Well, I didn't catch it because your audio cut out, actually. <laughs> you didn't write it down! No! no. Hey everybody, I'm Red, aka Kiana. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Rolling with Difficulty. We'll be back next week with another thrilling installment, but if you miss us before then, be sure to check out our Twitter and Instagram for more D&D nonsense. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to email the pod at rollwithdifficulty at gmail.com. Links to all that and more in the show notes below. If you enjoyed the show, please rate us and leave a review on your preferred podcast platform. See you next week!